I think I remember it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is uh, the opening of the Joint Planning Board and Selectmen uh, meeting for August 20th, 2015. Hope everyone's summer is going well. Informal discussion, uh, Vill Littleton Village Common East, joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Who wants to uh, lead this discussion? Uh, is Sherry here to talk about Village Common East? I guess I'll lead it off since I'm the one who asked, sort of well, try to get this on the agenda. So why someone will? <coughs> Let me just um, tell you what prompted this or precipitated this. Um, the ZBA has extended the 40B for the old village on the common, is that what it was called? Till December or January, I believe. And I just thought it made sense to bring all the parties together that are involved in this to see if there's another option that could be explored before the 40B is actually started. I mean, if that's all the only option that the owner of the property right now has and he's got a, a short time frame, obviously he's, he's trying to market the property and trying to uh, get, get, the, uh, get his money back out of it that he bought 10, 12, whatever, however many long years ago. And if we don't, at least... That, it, entertain it some sort of dialogue and see if there's some sort of common ground that the town, the planning board, the selectmen, the, the owners of the property um, can come up with, then we're going to have a 40B with 108 houses and we, we won't be looking back. So I just thought it made sense to bring everybody together and see where everybody stands and see if there's somewhere we can keep the, the um, dialogue open and come up with something that might be, make sense for all the parties involved. And that's why we're all here. Great. Um, does anybody else want to add anything to that discussion? I think uh, as far as the Board of Selectmen are concerned, we um, got the invite from the planning board. We said we'd be more than welcome to uh, join you and to listen to us of what the dialogue, as Mark said, is because we have no idea. Um, the, the, the plan for the housing development in 40B has been... 15 years or more, right? At least. Um, so. It, nine years, I think it was. Is it? Yeah, something is it? Like that. Nine years ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, so we're, 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 we're here to listen to the landowners. Um, it was proposed as Kimball and Moran, though. Um, so that's how it first came out. So I'm wondering if uh, you have any story about Moran or what that's all about. Uh, my name is Rob Ansel. I appear for Michael Kimball and Peter Kimball. Um, we are here to participate in the uh, discussion. We have an extension of our permits until January 4th of <coughs> 2016. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals has expressed that they are not interested in granting additional uh, extensions from our permits. When the Kimmels purchased this property, they were thinking about doing a number of uh, different things. Uh, those proposals uh, have had some fits and starts as far as um, different planning options. And at this point, we uh, the Kimmels have their 108 permits. They're certainly willing to explore other options. Uh, other options would need to include um, it's rezoning a portion of this parcel to commercial to allow for uh, more than likely the expansion of uh, Atkins Iowa Littleton and um, other options with that parcel. So I guess one of the first questions that would need to be addressed is or, or twofold is one that we would need the uh, endorsement of the planning board and um, the board select them to go back to the zoning board of appeals to ask them for additional time. Uh, I don't think that the zoning board of appeals is uh, looking towards granting another extension, but if there was some benefit to the town, perhaps they would do that. Basically, they want the 
permits to be acted on as opposed to continuing to be extended. We now have four months left on that, and uh, Mr. Kimball is exploring options relative to selling the property, but are certainly willing to look at other things. But looking at other things would include uh, a rezoning which, which would incorporate a portion of um, a commercial parcel which would be adjacent to uh, Mr. Moran's property. Uh, Attorney Paul Elfin is here. Um, this evening on behalf of uh, Mr. Moran and Attorney Dr. Shanes is here on behalf of the uh, Fletcher family. We, uh, Mr. Kimball would have been here this evening. His aunt is uh, turning 80 today and he didn't know about this until after he had planned the, uh, the birthday party. So I guess the bottom line is that uh, we are, uh, Mr. Kimball is willing to look at other options, but it would take an endorsement from kind of the, the powers that be to go back to the Zoning Board of Appeals to ask for an additional extension, and part of that would be uh, there would be a need for a commercial um, expansion of, of the existing um, uh, zoning district. Interesting. Does, does Mr. Kimball have any um, uh, thoughts on or desires on expansion of uh, the um, his uh, recreational component? Uh, he had explored that for quite some time. Would certainly be able to be willing to look at that. I know that, that uh, this board was involved with looking at the Fletcher component uh, or Fletcher property relative to uh, an expansion of uh, uh, you know creating a, a zone C. I don't know if you recall relative to the former plans that the Shane's is here. You can certainly reiterate those. Would certainly look at that, and that's what would be, you know, a date certain that, that would need to look at that. It's very difficult to, from the Kimball side of the world now, to say that we have four months to actively act on our permits. The Zoning Board of Appeals has extended the permits a number of times, and I think that they, they've kind of run out of uh, enthusiasm for granting extensions. The extent that they have authority to do that might be a, a, a different question. But the last Zoning Board of Appeals meeting that we went to, we had town council uh, at the meeting, and town council recommended to the uh, the ZBA that they grant the extension because they were told that if the decision was appealed, that uh, the uh, state would grant the approval for the extension, despite the fact that Littleton is now compliant with their 40B 10 percent uh, numbers. So that sounds uh, counterproductive in that statement, doesn't it? grant the extension as soon as them, but we're already over the 10 percent, so why would the state automatically grant the extension? There's a, uh, I, I'm unfamiliar with the decision, but there's a decision uh, the state had issued that said that, that uh, so long as you're making some progress towards uh, it, developing your project, even if you are over the 10 percent number, you can't not grant the extension. All right. but, and I, I'm not familiar with that case. To be honest with you, but that's what town council would we'll another, uh, another perspective you with Mr. Moran, is that correct? You're representing Mr. Moran? I am. I'm Paul Alfin, and I represent Bob Moran, who would love to be here but for an accident to his knee. And, uh, Jumping from boats? Perhaps. <laughs> the, um, what, what Rob said is uh, basically true, but let me add something to this. Um, as you probably are aware, some months ago, on behalf of Bob Moran, we submitted an application to the Board of Appeals for a variance to be able to use a parcel of residentially zoned land that Mr. Moran owns behind Acton Toyota, which is surrounded on three sides by the land, which is uh, the land that uh, Mr. Kimball owns for the 40B project. And uh, we were urged to uh, not pursue that uh, variance, and we withdrew the application and we were encouraged to stand down and let the town look at these properties in total. At that time, it was unclear whether Kimball was going to develop the 40B project or pursue some other options as regard to that. So we stood down, we're waiting, and we hope this is the beginning of some of those discussions, to see if the town is going to talk about that property and how it's going to be developed in the long run, whether it's going to end up as a, as a 108 unit residential project or whether it's going to end up with something that's planned out, a, a mix of residential and commercial or, or whatever it is going to be. Um, but if there, is, if, there, if there are going to be plans to use that for something other than residential, obviously our client is very interested 
in, uh, in being part of those discussions. Uh, obviously, there's interest in having some additional space for the dealership, but that doesn't mean that Mr. Moran, you know, wouldn't make concessions in terms of uh, what the uh, Great Road uh, view looked like. Uh, in, in other words, if we could use some of the land in the back for more dealership area, perhaps some of the cars that are parked along Great Road, you know, could be could be moved out back. Some additional landscaping or other improvements to be made along Great Road. Uh, Mr. Moran is interested in working with the town in terms of um, how all of this land would be used. Ultimately, it's not in Mr. Moran's best interest to have a residential uh, project abutting the back of his dealership. Uh, obviously, if that's the decision that you know Mr. Kimball pursues, say la vie, the, that's the way it's going to be. And uh, I think that it, it would it would be uh, very difficult for Mr. Moran to develop the parcel that he owns, which is I think around three acres. Uh, that, uh, that immediately is again is surrounded on three sides by this 40B uh, project and otherwise unusable by his dealership without a zoning change or without a variance. So we have Mr. Uh, excuse me, sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, Please, if I may, I'd love to hear from Mr. Duchesne also. Uh, not that we haven't heard from him before, but um, if if he's willing to talk. In regards to the uh, Fletcher property that this has been before this board on many occasions and um, has <coughs> no luck moving at all. So, Mr. Deshane, if, if you would be sure. so kind. Uh, members of the board, good evening. And I, I don't have my tie on, so I'm going to stay back here. <laughs> um, and, you are, uh, and you are Doug Deshane. Yes, Doug Deshane. Um, I do represent the Fletcher family, as you know, but I am also here uh, partially out of curiosity. Uh, I do have extensive experience in working with the boards and with the town and in trying to both rezone the Fletcher parcels, uh, work on overlays to affect the zoning of the Fletcher parcels, and as you know, we've spent a lot of years doing that. Um, and I'm not sure whether we have a horse in this race because I don't know whether this will, uh, pro you know, be progress to a point where whatever you ultimately do, it'll it'll reach my client's property, but we're obviously curious and, and always willing to cooperate and work with the town uh, towards land planning issues. But what I think you have here is an opportunity um, to, to make some decisions that will ultimately have a profound impact on this town with respect to the development of some very important parcels of land. Uh, you have a potential 40B which has uh, great potential for the town. On the other hand, I think there'll be a lot of people who'll say that 40B is not in the best interest of this town. You have an existing business in town uh, that would like to expand and operate in a, in a more efficient manner and might ultimately result in you getting back some of your frontage along 110 that can be developed or perhaps preserved in a way that you may find more aesthetically pleasing than the storage of cars. I think what you have is an opportunity. An opportunity, to, you've got two, three uh, willing landowners in a very active and, 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 and a part of town that's there's been a lot of work and talk and efforts on. And I, and I think what Mark was saying is bringing these people together and bringing you all together, you have an opportunity to really do some effective planning here that ultimately we hope will benefit you know, Mr. Kimball, benefit Mr. Moran, perhaps benefit the Fletchers, but more in fact, benefit the town of Littleton because what you'll ultimately get there are things that are good for your town, aesthetically pleasing for your town, and, and, and you know, solve some of your issues. If it's 40 B's and housing you need, you got a way to get it to happen. If you want to make one, that 119 a little more aesthetically pleasing by getting some of those cars out of the front and put in the back, have an opportunity. So I don't have answers. I, I, I'm, I'm certainly here to, to provide any information I can, and but I really think this is a great opportunity for the town to uh, have a say in how this stuff gets developed and gets developed in a way that, that's beneficial to you. So it, it's an awesome opportunity. I'm here mostly to hear how it goes and where it, you know where it all all takes us. If it takes us farther up west on 119 or or south, whatever that direction is, to the Kimballs, I mean to the Fletchers, that's awesome. But 
Uh, you certainly want it east. That is it east. I'm sorry. It <laughs> doesn't get up that early, do you? No, not often. <laughs> but, uh, but in any event, you certainly uh, have a great opportunity with respect to the Kimball and Moran properties to do some good things. So anything I can do to help. Well, that's great. Thank you, Doug. Any, uh, any more comment from the selectmen or from the board here? I think it comes down to a basic question. Do we want 40B or do we want to enter at least try to go down the road and try to get something other than a 40B? If we do nothing, we're going to get a 40B. Or the, the question really is, <laughs> the only change from residential to commercial? That's the question. That's the question. That's the question, but the... The only alter other alternative is the 40B. 40B. No, the 40B has already been approved. We've been waiting for it. It's been part of our planning uh, since it was approved. Yeah, but so that predates the previous 40B. Right. I'm sorry. It that predates the well, it, it's 40B. Still in our, it's still in our in our planning because it has been approved. So, wait, wait. Correct. Those numbers are inclusive. Absolutely. Does that so mean you would rather? Up, <coughs> would you rather no, see I'm, the 40B? I'm, I'm, I'm stating a fact that it's part of our planning. I so the decision here tonight. It's just to start conversation, I think we've already started that, and the question to the town will be, do you want, and you've had this conversation before, and you've been very vocal about it, Mark, does the town want to change residential property into commercial? This is entirely different than the Fletcher piece. This no, is it is it, it is, because uh, first of all, it's a 40B that's there. The is it Fletcher residential, Mark? Is all the property residential? It is. About? It's a hundred. Okay. Is it? And it does, do they all want pieces of the residential to be rezoned to commercial? But the Fletchers. I yes. don't want to. I don't the wanna, answer to the question is might. yes, they do. But the Fletchers <coughs> already have a piece of it rezoned. The Fletchers have have a as a residential piece of land that is now generating income, being the tubing park. So it's not exactly the same. That's Mr. under a special permit. Right. That's so Mr. Kimball could also come in and ask for a special permit for outdoor recreation as well. Yeah, but, what, but what we have in front of us now is the 104 eight unit 40B on top of. This was approved before the other 40B. Had this been approved and started, that other 40B probably wouldn't have been there. So now we have one on top of another one. We, were, we, we won't, but we sure we would have. No, gentlemen, gentlemen, we, we, the point we, is, yeah. I think you've made it. But let's get the facts yeah. straight. I, I need to. I just want to get these facts straight. My impression when we did the Omni 40B yes. was that those 108 units didn't count. They didn't right. Count. They had no. They had fallen off. They count because Thank it you. had been enough time, so they had fallen off. They, they were didn't count. They, they were still approved. Back but even, they were if still they, approved but exactly. even if they had they didn't count, count, they would not have caused us to reach 10%. We never reached 10% with just this, these 108. But they weren't included in the number that we're contemplating when we had all these meetings. For the Omni, too. Is it, is it in the right? Well, as, as Keith pointed out they, so clearly, they even if this had gone forward, it wouldn't have made yeah, it. If we had been able to, if the 108 were already built, we would well, not have been over the 10 percent, and all we still would have had the chances of what they had. Right. Right. But here we stand. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just on because they're they're 108 ownership units, only 27 ever counted on the inventory. Those 27 were on for a couple of years, and then they fell off. But even while they were on, and there was nothing else getting added. Even when those units were on, we were not at ten percent. We were what eight and a half percent. Okay, yeah. so in my, I just want to get the facts right. So today, where we stand right now, are those hundred and eight units counting towards our forty B inventory? Twenty seven. No, no, those no. twenty seven units do not currently count towards the inventory. Okay, that's right. Which, which go back to the point I'm trying to make. Just because we approved the forty B nine years ago doesn't mean that we still need a forty B today. So if you have an opportunity not to have a forty B now it's at our discretion. So I don't think it's fair to just characterize this as a, re as a retail versus housing discussion. This is a 40B project that we're talking about potentially looking at alternative uses for. That's what we're talking about. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So that's but, we, but my point, we have my a point a being, I'm sorry, Rich, may I? All right, finish. And uh, my, we have my one point, more question. My, my point was that the 40B, the 27 units right now, you know, during our planning process, right, we had, I think it was 2020, we, we were covered over the 10%. The building around town has exploded. So the permits being pulled are, are advancing our 10% uh, 
going under the 10 percent a lot faster Agreed. than than Agreed. originally assumed so the planning of this 40b what I, my point was if it comes online it's a inventory 27 to our inventory to, to get us to maybe pass 2020. we have so another that's that's all my point agree we, no, we, we, Jerry, we have another building. question uh, mr bella thank you um i'd ask that we ask our planner and our town administrator to come together with a coordinated fact sheet on the properties in question and some of the legislation that's involved and some of the decisions made over these past years so that rather i think i remember i sort of thought it was this becomes that we have a coordinated fact sheet for all of us. And it's something to be shared also with the landowners, so we're all speaking for the same. At saw tonight's objective as being the beginning of a discussion. I would say that the objective has been met, met well, and appreciate the gentleman uh, coming here to the positions out. I would also ask for you folks to consider that when you talk about perhaps working together, uh, we're going to just, and it's an assumption, and pardon me for that, you've had discussions together already. Uh, and perhaps some of those discussions have led to some options in your minds also. You mentioned them sort of individually from your own particular client's perspective, but we also talked about would one client be willing to work with another client in achieving something that achieves the mutual goals of your clients and the town also. So perhaps again, if some of those options were laid out in more than just a verbal discussion, but some things that uh, you may be willing to commit to to work towards with the town would be useful also. Rather than us, you know, talking back and forth, as I said already, sort of remember, might have remembered. But so I'd ask for good. you uh, if that you would ask the uh, clients, uh, excuse me, but the um, representatives of the clients, if they'd be willing to do that, and then certainly ask our planner and our town administrator to come with that fact sheet. Yeah. Are, are, the, are the proposers willing to to go down this road? You know, these are parties that communicate almost daily, and certainly their council communicate almost daily, and uh, that's very easily accomplished. The, the, the problem we have is we don't know what the hypothetical question is yet. Uh, as you heard, uh, Mr. Kimball has a decision to make, and, and Mr. Kimball is a very savvy business person, and Mr. Kimball is not going to spend a great deal of time and energy on plan B, C, D, and E until he finds out what's happening with plan A. And we have had those discussions with, with Mr. Kimball, and he's trying to find out um, if he has an option for plan B, um, because if he, if he, you, you can answer this question, if, if, there's, if the land is going to remain as is, and there's very little potential for it to be rezoned, I would expect that Mr. Kimball is compelled to pursue his 40B project ASAP. Is that a safe statement? Yes, and I think that from our uh, the Kibble side of the yeah. the world, we would need uh, an endorsement from proverbially the town, meaning Slackman and the Planning Board, to, as a directive to say that um, we should go back to the ZBA and ask for additional time and that you collectively support uh, a request for additional time um, because without that additional time we really need to sell the permits within between now and January 4th and uh, get moving on the project. So we well, sign an, an agreement to allow you to, uh, to continue on for another six months or whatever in the meantime the property can, can be turned around and as you said marketed for sale to somebody to continue the 40B. So now we don't have the devil we know is Michael but the devil we don't know is who he sells it to. So if we extend that, the permits, then where do we stand? That transfer is a state uh, act and not a, a local ZBA uh, mm -hmm. act. So we, we could, Kimball could sell the, the permits to another developer uh, group, and the state approval process is, oh. is primarily uh, financial. So in the project itself as to the layout of the units, we cannot change until such time as we go back to the uh, uh, the ZBA. So um, the, okay, the, thank you. I don't know as though the town would really be losing anything, but I know that from our side, if we don't act, then then you know we we potentially have the downside of losing the very valuable permits, going to the underlining zoning, going from maybe you know 108 units to something substantially less, and the value of the property goes down tremendously. So well, I, I think you've made that clear. Now, um, did. And Paula, Paula, Bella, Paula Bella made some uh, very good points. Is, uh, they uh, points that the that you uh, group would uh, would be considered would, would consider entertaining. 
meeting with and uh, and and showing uh, sure but what's hypothetical what, what's the what question your proposals what's the what's the question oh let's let's uh, Paul you gentlemen came to us with some proposals <coughs> now we said we only had plan A and we were concerned about plan B C etc yet I heard at least two options presented from the Kimball's popular perspective and that was <coughs> to sell it and the others to put a 40B. So that would seem there's already two plans <coughs> to discuss there. No, that's one plan. That's, that's the one, one plan is getting the current project as approved constructed. Okay, but was there not also the words he would look to sell the property possibly also? He would sell the property with its existing permits and it would get built in accordance with those permits. <coughs> that's one option okay. and we have a deadline in order to make what's called substantial completion. So substantial completion is making moves towards completing the project. Mr. Kibble has pulled uh, some permits. We have had meetings with the Zoning Board of Appeals and we the, the goal would be to build out the project as is or if we let those permits lapse, then the underlying zoning goes into effect and we have a potential to build a residential subdivision because that's all they can be built. So I'll circle back to my question then. Are you all working together? Because you did mention perhaps, I'm going to use the word trade, if that's a bad word to use, furnish for something in the rear, something that's currently residential in the rear of Mr. Rand's property. You suggest that perhaps if that would develop into a commercial piece so that it can move automobiles back there and reclaim some furnish to a more a satirical, if you will, more of a countryside view. If I've misstated that, please correct me. No, we, we have talked about that. There's an A&R plan floating around where that potential was, uh, was, uh, was unclearly stated. Um, but, but that but uh, we couldn't pursue that because of the dilemma that Mr. Kimball is in. So that, that deal fell apart. It fell apart for some other reasons too, but that principally was the reason it fell apart. But because that, it was all about timing. It was how quickly things were coming together, whether that could be accomplished or not, within the time frame it ordinarily takes to pursue development, pursue rezoning, pursuing those things. And, and the, 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 the clock just ran out. I'm going to offer a perspective and other folks and their perspective, but certainly, and you see we're in a master plan update process right now, you've certainly seen the discussions that's been ongoing with the Cooper property, so I think you've got a sense, and you've done business in town long enough, and the gentleman being represented have been around this town long enough also, you have a bit of a sense. So my question to you is, I don't see it as a hypothetical, it's a very clear question, are you all willing to sit down and put something and proffer something forward? that has the town thoughts in mind, and certainly your clients, that, that, that naive that their clients need to have your first thought here, but then how it also services the town's needs. So as we have this discussion, because I don't anticipate a decision tonight, quite frankly, I don't know came here expecting one uh, on these issues yeah, I don't think any, any of us had, um, had so that in mind. So as we go through this, it's more information for us to digest, and it helps us, and there'll probably be some trades, and then we can work together that way. Can we have a meeting in a month with a, with a rough plan about what we could look at on the table? Is that a fair assessment from, from your side to come back to the town and say, we want to take the cars out. I think what we're all talking about is getting the cars off the street. If we take the cars off the street and pack them in the back, can we put a retail component out there? Can we put something else? Can we see that on a plan and have that to discuss as plan B or plan C or whatever? And then we can give you, a, and hopefully you'll be asking us for an answer whether the selectmen and the planning board would go to the ZBA and say, we're working together to come up with a common good for everybody else. Will you join us at the ZBA and ask for an extension? We, we have a question, another yeah. comment. From Wait, can I get an answer to that question? Yeah, I mean, certainly, certainly we can do that. I think, you know, my client can do that. It's um, 30 days. Yeah, no, I, 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 I know how long a month is. I'm wondering whether that's the best plan, though. I mean, that, that's part of the problem, is that the best plan isn't Bob Moran taking his pie piece that's in the back and just putting cars on there and moving cars away from the street. You know, the better plan is looking at the entire Kimball parcel and, and figuring that whole out. coming with something. And, and, you know, I, I don't... Perhaps. I mean, we can certainly give it a shot. Can we Brian, I, I, I actually uh, 
Ms. Colley has raised her hand. She has been intimately involved in this project since its infancy. And I will overdo it as ZBA meeting if I can put my two cents in. Please. Okay. Let's Thank hold. Thank you. Yeah. I, um, I stumbled into this meeting. Name, name um, I, Cheryl Cowley, 44 Tadwin Road, ZBA member, not speaking for the ZBA because I stumbled into this meeting. We didn't know this meeting, this discussion was going on as a group. Um, but if I can put my two cents in as a ZBA member, we've given Mr. Kimball extension after extension after extension. This has been going on for years. That's a ZBA project that the ZBA worked hard on to work out something that would work for the town. That is also a project that has most of the units happen to have first floor masters. And we are desperately in need of senior housing in this town. That is an ideal location for senior housing in this town. That 40B if built as we specified, maybe with some minor modifications, would be an excellent addition to this town. The piece of land that Mr. Moran, that's currently res zoned residential, I would remind the planning board members, was originally dedicated to be a ball field. And the reason that it was left residential is that was a, a negotiation with the planning board, my understanding, to be a ball field with the previous owner from Moran. It would be nice if that was a ball field still, my personal opinion. But that, as a ZBA member, that ZBA, the permit has been pulled now. We have been up against deadline after deadline. We have given extension after extension. It should either go back to being residential land, or you August gentlemen should rezone it, or get the town to rezone it, or that 40B should be built. And for senior housing, that's an ideal location. They can walk to the stores, we could put up a crossing light for a 2A. It could be it could be a wonderful thing. So please keep that in mind. Wow, very good, Cheryl. Thank you very Thank much you. for your comments. After an upstairs to a ZBA meeting. Um, then we had a fun, fun, yeah, fun yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may, and, and, and I hear what Mark's saying, and I understand exactly, but um, I'd, I'd make one <coughs> modification to that, and that would be if we uh, let the, the Fletchers get involved in that also. We, when, when this when this meeting, I think Marin is the one that titled it Littleton East. Um, that's as east is more east than these guys, so and it's still part of Littleton. So I'd ask that possibly involve them also. Yeah, last summer or whatever, I spent the summer in meetings upstairs with a few of the selectmen and, and some other people with the the Fletcher, and that came I remember well to nothing. Which was ridiculous. He spent, you know, Mr. Duchesne spent a lot of time, my time, and, and to, to nothing, to no no fruit whatsoever. So with these guys, if you want to take the, the plan that, which was a great plan that the Fletchers were proposing, and and incorporate uh, incorporate that with the others, and go to Danny Pickard and go right down to, as far as I'm concerned, right down to, to Powers Road. That should be Littleton East, as far as because after that it's just swamp for the most part. Yeah, huh? <laughs> I'll buy you anything that's not already developed. You know, it's not <laughs> so I, I live on a swamp too. Just a suggestion. I guess that's the best I look at it. So I think. And I would. Do so I want to add to that. I think that you know, going down to the Fletchers, involving them, but also involving Danny Pickard. I stopped by Danny's on the way here tonight to let him know we were having this meeting, and he asked where his invitation was for this this discussion. So, well, you know, if we're going to selective here <laughs> in Littleton. Well. We're trying to get beyond that. So that I think nice. if we can include everybody from really? Moran's property all the way down to Powers well, we, Road. We had this discussion last meeting. We we actually voted to have a discussion between the planning board and the landowners. We weren't really prepared to go all the way down to Powers Road. I think we Wait, did you guys read the paper stuff. today? You want to open up that can of worms? You want to retail out 119 in Area C? That's what you're talking about. I mean, that's why Fudges didn't go through. Because of the frontage. That was the whole deal. I mean, we all sat through this yes. meeting for years. Come on. Terry, there's a lot of reasons Fletcher's didn't go through. R yeah. yeah, from your a perspective, lot of Richard. Yeah, and, from um, many perspectives. and that's not what we're discussing here today. That what is we're what, discuss we're what we're discussing here is the, is the uh, piece of land that, that uh, Mike Kimball has. And, and these gentlemen uh, want to come back to us with some sort of proposal that, that combines as, as much property on that end of town as, as so let's they keep could. the discussion limited to those parcels and the Fletchers okay that's why I died the last time then um, 
Uh, the Fletcher's this, this lepers is, 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 can't is, go anywhere without, 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 without including the Fletcher's. So enlighten me, Jerry. Why do we not want to include the Fletcher's in this conversation? Area C goes down to Powers Road. Right. It's the frontage on 119. That we want to preserve. That's what you're going to bring to town for. Yeah, but Jerry, this is we're we're in the midst of a of a uh, master plan update, and this sure. this sort of uh, discussion is is absolutely right in line with the master plan update because if there are if there are uh, areas that the townspeople want to see this later. rezoned, then then so be it. We we should at least allow the townspeople to have that discussion. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so um, we're running late on our next one. Uh, yes. So if we come back with a plan, you in a month, say, uh, uh, hypothetically, if we can do that, will you then be prepared to make a recommendation of what it feels? Because I don't personally have a lot of confidence that the zoning board of the field want to extend the, uh, the permits. And I think that your recommendation and the recommendation of the board of would go a long way in influencing them to say that, hey, we'll, we will look into this. I do think it's important uh, that these issues get um, looked at. It, it, it just, yeah. it, 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 we end up putting the Kimball family in a really bad pickle by saying that you're going to let your permits lapse and you're going to have the underlying zoning be residential. Uh, that, that's a really tough pill to swallow while we're, we're trying to assist the town and, and, and us at the same time by looking at a rezoning. So we, we would really need some kind of a feeling where the, the planning board uh, is. And otherwise, you know, our, our directive may be that we, we do two things. We, we continue to try to look at um, seriously at developing and selling it within the, the next period of time, and we also continue to speak with you. But if, if we are going to look at a long-term thing, we're going to need a zoning. Uh, uh, change, which is town meeting approval, and there's it's a year long process. You'll need a, you'll need a full consensus for that. Um, now you have an opportunity. You you um, you presented your case as well, I think today. Um, there's more more to this, and it's worth worth having the townspeople listen to what you have to say, and and making a decision. I think um, I think you've done well today. Now, to Paul's point. Uh, Please come back with something and please make it more than just uh, unilateral or even bilateral. Okay, give it a shot. That's great. I know you, know you can do it, Paul. And you too, Rob. Thank you. And you Thank too, you. Doug. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Now, um, we're a little late on our informal discussion about the Cooper, Cooper Farm Open Space Residential Development concept. the uh, planning board to take a look at a conventional uh, sure. conventional plan uh, on the 34th farm and then a potential cluster zone just for discussion purposes just as a preliminary look see at the property so okay well for everybody that um, hasn't doesn't know who most of the players are sorry uh, Cheryl Gould for the, uh, for the Cooper family this is Matt, Matt Field, Field and Michael Field, and they're with m, m Realty Trust, the uh, developers who have made a proposal to the Cooper family. And um, part of their proposal and discuss ongoing discussions with the Coopers are to continue going forward with some due diligence on their agreements. And so they just wanted to present before the planning board tonight what would be an engineered layout of the property with a conventional subdivision with no preservation of open space and no uh, none of the um, um, highlights and amenities, and then what could happen with a cluster or an open space residential development under the zoning bylaw. So, Matt, you want to go up and present that? That's cool. great. So, you're representing the Coopers or the Fields? I'm representing the Coopers in the Fields in a joint development agreement with the uh, consent of both parties, and I'm just going to put this right there, or where, where do you want to mark? I, okay. <laughs> Actually, in your meeting packets, the only one that I got to give to you was the. Um, I'll put it here so everybody can see. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, on the wall, on the wall in front of the window usually works the best. Yeah. 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 
website. All right. Now, do you have do you have that electronically? The, yes, I do. Uh, the town key could look on, on, on the screen online. Hmm? Correct. You have it. Yeah, it's online. Yeah. OSRD. You can only send it OSRD. It's a conventional one. Didn't go over to yeah, that's a conventional right there. That didn't go over to Keith on. on oh, you didn't get that one, Keith? You've got the conventional. I didn't get that one. To no? Get to the board, OK. I will uh, electronically mail it to you tomorrow. I've seen that one. OK. Begin. So what we've done is done a conventional subdivision. We have done all the testing on the site. We have. Uh, had our engineer flag the wetlands. We have 21 lots plus an area of five acres here for 55 and over. The wetlands have been flagged. Uh, this area is open space and it depicts 21 lots there. The frontage on the road. Okay. Every, any questions on the conventional subdivision by any of the board members? Any of the, any of the selectmen, any of the public. We've done all the septic testing, engineering, and laid it all out. All right. Let's. Um, so it's got two two entries on the Great Road. Yep. Two entries and uh, one loop down here. Not greater than seven hundred and fifty feet. Okay. On the other side, we have a cluster zoning where we're. 21 lots we have an existing structure that we're going to donate or keep to a farmer it's still open for discussion we have the nine acres plus in the whole frontage including a lacrosse field or a ball field that will donate and build we have 21 lots and a 55 and over with three affordable units there as well we are connecting the sidewalks throughout the, the subdivision we're doing walking trails around where where it'll fit with, within the wetlands and not disturbing those areas. We have made a deal with a local farmer to uh, farm this area in front. <coughs> we have common septic up here and then another one right in this area <coughs> right here. Serves the whole subdivision. Now was there a um the walkway that was going to transverse the whole property? Yeah, we, we had a perimeter walk line, and we'll have it within the areas that will allow us, uh, certainly down in here and around, and then up to sidewalks and up to sidewalks around here as well. The entire subdivision will have sidewalks, and we'll connect them to the downtown. Very good. The, the perimeter walkway past. changed only because of where the wet, wetlands are. Can't go through them. So can, can we go over? Road 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 I'm sorry. Yes. Can we, road 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 we could do either. Yeah. I mean, we have we have the area to do town road or a private road. You have to build to the town standard, anyways. Correct. Yeah. No, but we didn't accept the one up by uh, Alpha New York because it had private sewer. We have the ability yeah. to do either, Basically and we're, we're willing to do both. Yeah. The town. Yeah. The t it's not uh, a bylaw that the town can't accept an under road sewer. It's not in the bylaws. The um, does the board have any questions on? on so the these are our two cluster. options for this. Is that correct? Correct. The open space. Um, how will that be deemed? When you said you're a local farmer, is it hay? It is that the idea? Or no, it's going to be it's going to be food. Okay. It's, uh, local farmer Jamie Cruz. All right. And that open space is is the agreement is is with. Presently, with her to, to do the farming of it, but it's the open space is, is is that like a deed restriction on it to the town? Yes. Is that how it works? Yes, state deed restriction. It's over. It's very very close, if not over fifty percent open space. But now this lacrosse field is that turf? No. Uh oh. We're going to build a natural field. Well, <laughs> I mean, it all comes from nature. Even plastic comes from nature, right? It's going to be it's going to be a natural field. All how, many, how high will the stands be? And what kind of lighting will we be using? Now, Mac, in this in this uh, in this plan, are you figuring one or two family houses? I mean, one one or two bedroom houses? No, these are the, the twenty one lots are going to be three bedroom homes, 
three bedroom. Uh, 23 to 2,800 square feet. And the 55 and over will have three affordable units. And there'll be two bedroom masters on the first floor. I'm sorry? Those are size restricted. Those are size restricted. Does the, do the selectmen have any questions on this? really not on our agenda tonight. We're not posted for this. This is not on our agenda, so we don't want to. Now, do we have to close the meeting that we were earlier with when they were? No, we can no. stay open. We can stay open. We're back together at 745. Correct. Well, oh. we might as well stay open. Just keep your mouth shut then, I guess. It's <laughs> <laughs> well, tough to do, Rich. It's tough to do. do. <laughs> okay, anything from, from the, uh, the uh, crowd? Yes, uh, state your name, please. Walter Barkus, 5 Delaney Drive. With all this action happening in this area, I'm surprised nobody brought up the, the idea of having the developers work on a sewage plan for the town. It's amazing to me that you're going to build this whole area and not look into that. You mean the one that's down at Kimball's? I'm sorry. I the one that's, that's already down at the... Uh... You've got to talk loud to Oh, you got to listen better. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've got the hearing I, as high as they go. <laughs> no, I mean, Kimball's has a, has a uh, treatment plant partially built, correct? I have no idea. But that's, I, I, I really uh, think you missed the boat if you don't think about that at least. Well, but that's, a, that's a great suggestion. And uh, this is still uh, probably premature <coughs> to, to that discussion, but it won't fall off the radar screen. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Barkas, we have done all our testing on that, so we have the capability of doing a shared system on site. Knowing how good you are, I'm sure you have and that you're all set, but that doesn't do anything for the town and the town's eventual service system. I think we're doing enough with donating 50% and yeah. putting a ball field in. But Get everybody oh, together and do more. Yeah. So, all right, let's, with, let's stick to the, uh, the the point of the discussion here, the the, uh, uh, the residential development. Um, any any comment from any of the, the townspeople? The uh, the next time we would see you then would be for um, uh, would be after you clear the selectmen, I presume. That, what, what would your agenda be, uh, Sherry? Probably after uh, the selectmen uh, is cleared or town meeting closed it or whatever the Coopers decide to do. Yeah. Um, and then they go forward with the permitting process. And then then, then, then you're back in front of us to yeah. decide yeah. either the, the cluster plan or the open space, I mean the, the conventional the, or the cluster. Yeah, as your board knows, when I've had uh, developments and others have had developments, of this magnitude, they always bring back, bring before you, uh, discussion for discussion purposes, a concept plan before they spend a lot of money on right. finite engineering, and so that's what they're doing today. In the past, you've talked about whether you consider it too dense or whatever, and I'm not hearing any strenuous opposition to the conventional <coughs> plan yielding that many lots, and then the concept plan. Okay, I, I would remind the board that usually you. when you have this discussion, you have an awful lot more information than just two plans. Yeah. So well, we'll given what we do have, it's kind of you know, given, given what we were given before the meeting. Now it's not. Really, yeah. it's well, the board has yeah. to decide whether it's going to be open space or conventional. That's correct. That's right. Well, what they're proposing well, is it doesn't require a lot of conversation I guess um, I can tell. Well, thank you very much for coming uh, in front of us today is there any, anything further you'd want from us Mr. Chair I didn't hear what Mr. Scott had to say can I just oh, ask please. him to repeat huh I didn't hear what you listen said I, I was going to listen back. Walter if I could borrow this no. <laughs> Peter did you did you um, what, did, what did you have to all say all these sidebar jokes you guys got going I don't know what the hell I'm talking about anymore I mean, obviously, given the choice between a conventional and an open space, in my book, it's the open space. It's, it's thank you. Know, yeah, that's my that's my opinion. For wherever it goes from here, that's my opinion. And once again, the fields are related to me only through marriage. Okay. Everyone know. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know what she sees.
appreciate it. My good All right, luck. 745. Boy, my bald head and yeah. yeah. You guys are rounding up. It's brighter in here. Thank you. Reflective. We're going to review, review the joint appointment uh, for the master plan. Uh, Appointment. Yeah, the Master Plan Update Committee uh, appointment. Let's see. Do we have um, Renato Nagomi here? Oh, we do. Oh, good. Uh, would you care to come up? Okay. Now, this is a joint appointment, so it'll be uh, Selectman and us, and I guess we're going to throw questions at you. Before we begin, could you uh, describe a little bit about yourself and, and uh, how you can help us on this uh, process? So, uh, my name is Renato Michelagomi. I, I know I have a Japanese last name and Italian first name, but I was born in Brazil. Just clarify things. I moved to Littleton actually about uh, 49 King Street, uh, right in front of uh, high school. Uh, and we acquired like in, in April, and we moved, we are moving since then. So actually, I still have boxes in the house. Uh, I am a, a bachelor and a master's in electro engineering, power systems, and I, I work. Uh, I'm changing jobs. I can more than half a second to tomorrow, and I'm moving to another company uh, on Monday. Uh, it's a hardware related for high frequency trading. So. They, uh, computer stuff and basically uh, I I was uh, part of actually a JB a green advisory board in Acton when I previously uh, before moving to Littleton and I when I moved to the US actually that's what I say it's really interesting how the the government system here is, uh, is different from Brazil. In Brazil, you cannot participate in those things. I mean, you can, but it's, it's very, uh, it's, not, it's not easy to do those things. So to be heard or to participate in the local government system. And I think that's very interesting. And I think it's incredible here in the US to have such a uh, way to of, of government. Uh, and that's why I was trying to I don't. I don't. I, my only knowledge is about mo mostly related to engineering, electro engineering. I know, but I I like to hear facts both sides and always balance things. So I I'm very sometimes very acceptable, but I if you have good arguments, you can convince me, of course. So I think I'm just trying to bring some balance and some outside view of like. Someone who was living there. Uh, I know that I didn't live there for a long time, but uh, I bought a house here, so I'm, I consider myself now a resident of Littleton. I want to help the town to to fulfill their goals. And I think that's it. Well, that's great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, any questions from the board? Jerry, Mark, um, Peter. Are you pursuing uh, American citizenship? Actually, I already had my my interview. I was approved. I just I'm just waiting for my uh, for the oath of allegiance uh, Good. to be held at some point in some months. Great, mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, welcome to Littleton in America. Thank you very much. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Does Selectman have any questions? Sure. I see that you um, you're you're definitely interested in the Sustainability Committee, the Cultural Council. In the master plan, um, and we're here for the master plan tonight. Um, we tell this to our volunteers as the board of selectmen come before us. We love your enthusiasm. We, we'd love to see you get on the sustainability committee and the other uh, committees that you feel you can have the time to designate. Uh, you know, some some input because uh, the diversity of town always helps us out. So we appreciate you putting it in. Um, one question is. You know, you're, you're starting a new job. Do you think you're going to have time constraints? Or, you know, that's that's a nice question. Actually, thank you for asking. So, actually, my new job will allow me to work from home 100. percent So fantastic! And actually, congratulations. And it, it starts from I, I will work from 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. from home. So, 
I can. I have all day long. Nice. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you. That's the only question I have. Yeah. That's it. Especially when you sign a new job, I can. I know how hectic that can be. Yeah. Mike, been the same job for thirty years. Yes. <laughs> My only question is. Um, you, you offered some critiques of the master plan and you know, whether or not um, we're on path and what, what experience do you feel you would bring um, administratively or what are some ideas that you would have to help to show that we are making progress or you know, what would you add to change that you feel is kind of lacking in that? Uh, so I read through the, the master plan. No, I, I think it's very well covered. I don't know if I'm wrong. It's not, there's nothing really wrong. I mean, it's just that I think it needs more updates, uh, more kind of constant updating. Because the, I think that the uh, the master plan was done in 2002, and actually the reports are based in the 90s. So, and things change. So I think we should be. Of course, not spend a lot of money to, to try to make it every year or something like that, but try to update more often. And we are the information society now, so we can have information anywhere. We can gather information, data everywhere. So I don't think it will be too difficult to have. I think actually it's too much data that we have, but we need to know how to filter it. And that's how I can help. Excellent. If you do get appointed, I prefer that you not contact us at like 2 a.m. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived around the world many experiences uh, that you bring to this. Um, you said you moved in April to Littleton? So, yeah. so each of us in the room has an idea of what Littleton was, is, should be. So if, just in very short snippets, uh, maybe it would be difficult to say what it was in your mind. but. Um, what do you think it is, and what would you like to see um, raising children in town? And what would you like Littleton to be for your children? So I have a kid. I have a two year and a half daughter, okay. Sophia. So uh, I, I I like what I, I read in the master plan that was written in 2002, like uh, a lot of space and the feel, uh, look and feel of like a small town, but still having the developments of our, of a modern. Uh, town, so I think that's that's the the goal that I I relate to. Like it's still having this, because again in Brazil I was born in São Paulo, 20 million inhabitants. It's crazy, <laughs> crazy. Okay, it's awful. It's violence everywhere. I don't like. That's why I'm here in the U.S. And that's that's what I'm looking for here, and that's how I feel. So I moved. I'm moving from from Acton to Littleton. And I said. Listen, this uh, we are discussing. I mean, my wife. Well, where where should we go? So we just went like one town after act and say, hey, this is good. This is nice. Like the look and feel. They have. It. I mean, we, I particip participate in the first uh, third or Thursday when I arrived here, and all the town people are really nice, and they they really greet you, even if they don't know. The public's very welcome. That's what I, I look for. Pretty nice. Good to hear. 7 p.m. to this room Tuesday night. See ya. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a motion, just, uh, Mr. Avella? Yeah. Could be. Um, do we have a, uh, any more discussion on this board? I don't think so. Good. Do we have a motion? We have a motion. Please. <coughs> you had a motion? I have a motion. I, I had it. I gave it to Jimmy to give it back to me. Let's have your motion. Move the board of selectmen and the planning board vote to appoint Renato Nakagomi to an indefinite term on master plan update steering committee. Do we have second. a second? Second. <laughs> I guess. Thank you very much. I guess we do. Um, any discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. Mr. Mr. Um, Renato, thank you very much. Careful what you wish for. All right. The selectmen have adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you very much for coming tonight. Thank you very much. All right. The next item, next item we have on our agenda are the uh, update of the steering committee timeline. Uh, Peter, do you want to? No.
Okay, then I'll give an update. Steering committee. Um, this is the, the master plan update steering committee. We've appointed a, a, a subcommittee. The subcommittee came back with an RFP, R, RFQ, I should say. RFQ is, is a document that we use to hire a consultant. Um, the timeline is such that the RFQ will be done the end of this month. End of September. September 29th. It'll be, um, submissions will be due on October 23rd. So that we hope to get a consultant hired by middle of January. Middle of January, yeah. yeah. If we can Basi get to that schedule. Basically, October we evaluate, December we select, and uh, January we, um, we hire the guy or the company. And that, uh, that company will help uh, guide us through the process. They'll conduct the, they'll help us in the, in the process of conducting the open meetings, <coughs> uh, collecting consensus uh, around the town on, on um, just what the town's people want to see in terms of uh, the future of the town of Littleton. Um, that's been very difficult because a lot of um, uh, town's people have a hard time making some of these meetings and, and reaching out is going to be the, the biggest challenge this consultant will have. And so that, that'll be one of the focal points that we'll, we'll uh, target when we, um, when we go to select uh, the consultant to help us. Uh, Paul, do you have any, any comment on, oh, to add that? I'd just like to add, um, first of all, to recap on the RFQ, thanks very much for that. Uh, for folks who don't know, Paul Lavella, the chairman of the Master Plan Update Steering Committee, and one of your selectmen here in town. Um, this Tuesday is our next meeting. It's at 7 p.m. right here in room 103. And as Rich already mentioned, we'd certainly love to have the public come out and be a part of this. The outreach that will occur for sure as we go forward, and actually has already begun, uh, we're looking at setting up social media sites. We're looking at uh, other forms of outreach, uh, some that are non-traditional for some of us older folks, such as Rich and myself. Uh, but we're working towards some of those things. Um, but very seriously, and we've also reached out. We've had other towns who have recently gone through it. For example, Harvard um, here at Boxborough is here, representatives from the towns. Represents from Concord, who, as I say, have recently gone and actually Boxborough is in the process of coming to closure on their current master plan update. They've come and spoken to us. We've had uh, a gentleman from the uh, Massachusetts Association, uh, MASPC, um, come and uh, talk to us also. Um, and we're this coming Tuesday, uh, we're very fortunate to have a guest coming from Northeastern University, Kathleen right. Cumber. She's a senior right. research associate at the Dukakis Center for Urban Regional Policy, the School of Public Policy and Urban Affairs at Northeastern University. And it's going to be about economic development self-assessment tool. Mike Selden, sitting right behind me here, one of our members on the uh, steering committee, has a good deal of experience with this and then also has reached out to Northeastern for this particular uh, exercise that we'll be going through as a committee and looking forward to going through a town. So certainly folks, invite you to come on out Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. right here in room 103. Thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Well done, Paul. <laughs> Any, anything to add to that, Mike? All of you should show up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so the, there you have it. Um, it's a very important uh, process. It'll help guide the town for the next 10 years or more. Um, it'll be a uh, right now. It's on a on the tracks to a good beginning. Um, July 9th, 2015 meeting minutes. Um, do we have a accepted as read and formative and progressive? A motion on the meeting minutes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any edits? What do you mean? Wait, wait. We're going to be approving the meeting minutes for July 9th. Didn't you just make a motion to approve it? That's what yeah. I did. We have a motion and a second. Why are we going to... Any discussion? Well, why would, you, why would you make a motion to approve it and then a second the motion to approve it and then have a discussion about it? Why don't we just have a discussion and then make a motion to approve? And well, you want to discuss it. Let's Pro discuss it. Procedurally, that's how I'm doing it. Yes. You can do it either way, but procedurally, that's exactly how I'm doing it. Okay. So, are there any, uh, yeah, is there any discussion on the meeting minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. This is all open. Wow. <coughs> okay, where are we now? Mail, 
bills. And the bills and payroll are coming around for your signature and approval. Yeah, McIntosh Lane. And then we had right two inspection reports from McIntosh Lane. Um, the work seems to be going quite well out there. Um, and I and I really appreciate the thoroughness of Green's thank you, of Green's um, oh. inspection reports. I'll sign those two. Yes. Yeah. McIntosh, the one on my own. Um. Yeah, off of Grisville Road. Some big boys going back there. So and technically the approval says that um, the subdivision approval says that the uh, inspection reports aren't valid until you guys vote to accept them. So we would vote to accept those two. Make a motion to accept the inspection report. Is written. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the um, the inspection reports for Orchard, uh, for McIntosh Lane, uh, reports number 13 and 14. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, the ayes have it. That's done. We're up to the... Uh, Wireless. The wireless guy. Yeah, the, we have guy left to, the only guy left in the room. We have a we have a public hearing that's going to open up at eight fifteen. So we have about six minutes to go before we can. Oh. This is the one. Like I said, we have a public hearing that opens at eight o'clock for the wireless telecommunications. Almost on time. Are you going to read that? Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, if you wouldn't mind scanning this, please. Uh, first, we'll, first we'll open the, the hearing. Ed. Okay. Public hearing, Renew Wireless Telecommunications Facility, 519 Great Road. Town of Linton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, August 20th, 20, 2015, at 8 p.m. in room 103 of the Shattuck Street Town Hall. 37 Jack Street to consider the application to renew a special permit pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A in the Code of the Town of Littleton Zoning. Wireless Telecommunication Towers and Facilities Section 173-128 through 173-133. Property Location 519 Great Road, Map R-18, Parcel 14-1. Property Owner Town of Littleton Water Department, Applicant T-Mobile Northeast LLC. The applicant is seeking to renew an existing special permit under the wireless telecommunication and facilities bylaw to allow continued, continued operation operating over the 150 foot monopole and antenna panels and associated ground based equipment and utility. Interconnection at 519 Gray Road. Application and plans can be viewed at the planning board and town clerk's office during their business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed plan should appear at the time in place designated or provide comment to Baron.org <laughs> or P.O. Box 1305 Littleton, Mass. 01460 by August 18th, 2015. Very good. Uh, state your name, please, for the record. Sure. I'm Jeffrey Barbador. I'm here for Crown Castle. We own the cell tower. Okay, do you want to give us a, um, give the public a, uh, an explanation of what we have here? Sure, we have, uh, just, just as explained, it's a 150-foot uh, monopole built by T-Mobile. And it was built uh, over this, you know, under a special permit, and one of the conditions of the special permit was to renew that special permit every five years. Mm -hmm. So we are coming up on five years, and that's why I'm here to renew that special permit. Any, any changes to the equipment or the antenna itself? No changes. So it's just a, a basic, just your basic renewal. Correct. Yeah. Um, does the board have any questions? It's nice to come in. Most of the uh, mobile carriers, they don't bother to come in for the renewal. Well, until they look to update their equipment, right, at which point the building inspector sends them back to you. No, nice to come and preempt them. Yep. No problem. It wasn't too long ago then that then you were before us to ask for permission to put that antenna up. Because there was a, there was a, um, a big um, area that wasn't covered. Did that ever get covered? Um, so, yeah, so in the last couple of years, the carriers have been adding um, 
because of this new LTE technology on uh, 4G, you hear it all the time. They've been adding this yeah. antenna uh, to their equipment. All the carriers are doing it. But yeah, that went up, and um, uh, it's been it's been in service since. It's probably been a couple of years now. Great. Um, any any questions? Any further questions from the board? Um, what is the pleasure of the board? I can entertain a motion to approve the renewal of the T-Mobile uh, uh, cellular tower um, permit. Permit. So that's a second. That's a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, the motion will be your your permit will be approved with the um, the same set of um, conditions. Sure. Yeah. Aaron, do you have anything to add to this? No, I think we I think we talked about that one. Um, the draft decision that I had shared with the board, I shared with you. Um, there weren't any concerns. I guess the only question was about the bonds, and I, we found that those were in place already. Yeah, yeah, yeah the five thousand dollar bond. Yeah. Very good. The money goes to the water department, right? On this one. It's on water department land, yeah. correct? Right. And. So I'll try to get that filed with town clerk um, by early next week to start the official appeal period. Yep. So. Okay, I'll check in with you and I'll scan these over to you. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank great. You. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, thank very, you very, much. very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Now we have a public hearing at 8.15, which we'll roll into in a few minutes. But Mark, how has your summer been going? Good so far. You can go home, by the way. We got nothing else to do. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I'm just curious. Oh, well, you're more than welcome. But, but, you democracy know. at work or not? What? Yeah, democracy at work. F it's Fletcher's song, the problem. Kim Ballone's Fletcher piece. Which piece is that? The very first piece going in. Uh, up, to right. up to the road? Up to the, the, lane? the lane in the middle. He does. He does. And that's a big piece because that goes way, way back. Yeah, that's the big piece. Yep, Perfect. that's the piece with all the salamanders. It's taken them two years to agree to a price because that has all the spotted salamanders and everything on it. But yes, that's yeah. so the, the only the flinches, yeah. Um, what's going on with the turkey property? I haven't gotten any updates at all on that. And what about um? The K property that's attached to it. Anybody know about that? Nobody knows. I don't know anything. The K property. K owns next to next to uh, Durkee? They own behind it. No, I'll be down. Yeah, I don't know. You have no idea what I have no idea. <coughs> All I know is that um, you know that the developer never came back, right? But once we, didn't. we we had an informal discussion with them way back in February and Mark, you must have scared them away when you talked to them about all that wetland stuff. No, and they they came with an informal plan, and we all threw it out of the water, right? Because it didn't, didn't pass muster, so maybe it's maybe not coming back. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. You can't build in wetlands. Well, not only that, but he didn't have any frontage on the road. He didn't. They really? couldn't get the Foster Street. That's right, too. Because of the MBTA. The fence company, yeah. Page Fence yeah. Company. That's, maybe they, yeah. that's just that's a nice, nice piece of land, but it's just going to be a very difficult piece to build on. Track. Yeah, something yeah. else. I'll try to look at it, figure out which one what? it was, and we'll buy the turkey piece. They're yeah, asking about turkey. They're killing time. Asking about the turkey piece. Mm -hmm. How's the point going? Any any uh, update from. Mm -hmm. Ask Marin, how's the point going? When are we having a big grand opening? Um. I haven't heard any updates on when the grand opening would be for the point. Um, they will be in at the September meeting to pro provide you an update. I thought that we're going to have a like, grand opening this year. Hmm? No, I would, I would imagine that you'll hear before I do, Mark. What? I would imagine you'll hear before I do. I don't think so. No, I just, I just heard that that was the rumor that they were gonna, this was the year they were going to have the, the big grand opening because now there's stuff open there and, you know. Yeah, how much longer are they going to wait? What, for it to have a grand opening? opening? Yeah, other than maybe the, the market pressure. Yeah, maybe the movie pressure, yeah. We can host the whole time. All right. Go ahead, Richard. It's 8.15. All right. 8.15. Ed, you want to do, uh, do your service here? Public hearing, Aqu Aquifer District Special Permit, 30 Taylor Street. The Town of Lipton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, August 20th, 20 2015 at 8.15 p.m. in room 103 of Town Hall, 37 Shattuck Street, to consider the applicant for a special permit pursuant to Mass General Law 40A in the Code of Littleton, Town of Littleton Zoning. 
The application is for an aquifer district special permit use under section 173-61 through 173-64 of the code of the town of Littleton zoning. Here. Property location 30 Taylor Street assessor's map U-41 parcel 26. Owner Thomas F. Napoli, applicant Idlewild Farm Inc. The applicant is seeking approval to pave this existing gravel driveway and parking area and associated drainage improvements rendering impervious more than 15% of the lot area with the aquifer district. Applica applicant plan and application and plans can be viewed at the planning board and the town clerk's office during their business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed plan should appear at the time and place designated or provide comment to Marin. Mail it in at P.O. Box 1305, Littleton, Mass. 01460 by August 18th, 2015. Do we have the applicant here? Um, I'm representing the Okay. Can you state your name, please, for uh, the record? Dan Carr from Stamps and Engineering. Yeah. Dan, come on up and tell yeah, us what like you're doing. I think this is a good spot right here. Yeah, it's a dead man. Say that again. It looks like Leonardo DiCaprio. Me? Yeah. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> This is the old Louis Page property, right? Here. I don't know yeah, about fence to start here. Is this all fencing? Yeah. Okay, so this is the existing conditions of the plan. There's an office building, a warehouse, and there's regular parking in between them. And there's pavement in front of the existing office building, and there's also pavement at the two entrances to the warehouse on either end. Our um, client is wishing to pave this gravel, gravel parking area. Mm -hmm. Um, in order to do that, we need to do some stormwater controls because it is in within the uh, Oxford District and Zone 2 drinking water supply. So to do that, we um, added two catch basins at the low points in the proposed parking area right here and by the loading dock over here. And those two catch basins are connected to a drainage manhole and then that drainage manhole empties out those runoff into a sediment floor bay and infiltration basin down here at the back of the warehouse. Um, the sediment, the uh, deep sump floated catch basins and the sediment floor bay provide the treatment needed for the aquifer district before being infiltrated. And that's basically it. Which are percent appropriate now? It's currently without, well, once it's done, it would be 29%, just under the 30. Okay. That's including the existing buildings and everything else with right. the new pavement going in. So the Conservation Commission's looked at this already? Not yet. I have to submit the notice. The engineers have uh, is something for green. Um, did, you did you read the packet? We already got it. Right. Green got did, that one in there? Right. Green did, did not did look it. at it, but uh, Corey uh, Godfrey of the Littleton Water Department, he took a quick look at it and had no problems no with it. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing with the pretreatment and the infiltration basin. Okay. How many parking spaces are added? Um, we don't have any official parking spaces here, but um, in existing, there's not many people that go to this office, so they kind of just go together. Yeah. What's going to be in the big building? Um, I know Tom Natalie owns a farm, so I think it's probably farm. That's where it's all farm stuff. Yeah. It's all farm stuff. Right. Will they be open up, opening up a, a shop there, too? Or, no. Or this is just like storage. storage. Just storage. Okay. He's been doing this since I was a kid. Oh, yeah. oh, that's been no. Louis Page forever. This, this location is, this location Louis, is Page. Louis Page forever. It's it's Self-fencing out of there for a few. That's the railroad tracks. Oh, wait, this Taylor is Taylor's. Oh, I'm sorry, I read the... Oh, I, oh, this is right up to the, the railroad tracks. Down the street. Yeah, I did. Oh, <laughs> so, any questions from the board? Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. The comments that I sent you, we did get one more... I did get feedback from um, light department and there's no impact to the light department and then fire department came in yesterday and they have no issues. Yeah, it looks like there's no com no issues anywhere. You're going to be storing farm equipment. Uh, yes. Yeah. You're going to be storing any hazardous materials. No. None. No. No gas tanks. No fuel. Not that I know. In the equipment. What's that? In the equipment. Well, within the equipment? Yeah, you'll have fuel and well, you'll have hydraulic. You'll have equipment to get it in and out, but as far as you're not going to be storing 
you know, 150 gallons of diesel fuel for fuel for any of the vehicles. Correct? They can't. They need a permit for that. Well, right. If if they were going to, they'd have to apply for the um, special permit. Yeah. There's um, also a uh, flapper valve on this drainage main hall in case of any emergency spills or anything. We can shut off the drainage system before it infiltrates. It's nice. That's a real drainage system. That's real paving, and that's real secondary containment and real tertiary containment and, and manholes and everything else. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a little fake yeah. parking lot that you roll up in the middle of the winter and pretend you wow. park cars. Oh, on. All right. That's a rant. Dude. Well, that's, 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 I just think it's nice rant. that they, they spent the money and the engineering and everything else we like have that. A, we have a motion to close the public hearing. I'm second that motion. All right. Me too. And a second. Any further discussion? Nope. Good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public Aye. hearing is closed. Now, now we vote on the on the conditions, Mary. Do we have a do we have a uh, a cheat sheet? I believe you do. You should be giving him cheat sheets. Mm -hmm. It's so Why many. Not? She had to take a test. Is that, he wants a test. That's right. I have to learn learn this stuff. No, Marin notes. Mm -hmm. okay, cheat sheet is the uh, the list of conditions. Oh yeah. The Probably no the sodium DNC. The draft decision with the engineer's office. I don't. I don't think they had any comments on it. Correct. Okay. We okay. Had a chance to review it. It includes the standard groundwater monitoring. If the water department recommends that it needs it, yeah. um, at this point, I don't think they were asking for a sampling, a groundwater sampling. Oh yeah, that was that one. Well, yeah, nothing. Okay, so the tracks. I um, think I have it here. So the, I'll, intent, I'll entertain a motion to um, to grant the special permit uh, with the conditions as noted. So moved. Second. Do we have any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none. The ayes have it. Yeah, that was passed. Thanks you to give me a little more time to think about that. I want to say no. Now we have um, just for fun. You have a draft site plan decision as well. Site plan, yes. Oh, yeah, I can't leave you. Yeah. We didn't do the site plan. Dan, yeah. you're not through. No. One more permit. No. All right. All right. Now um, we have uh, a hearing. We get the. Can we again? No, 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 no. It's the same. So what I'm recommending in the site plan modification decision is to use the same conditions as in you just voted in the special, um, permit. special permit, Very except good. that this decision doesn't have to be recorded. This is this is the same. These are the same conditions that were sent to your office. Um, do we have a motion? So moved. That's to approve the site plan modification. Do we have a second? Second. Now we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Now you can go. The ayes have it again. Now you can go. Very good. We're almost on track. Oh, we'll screw it up. Go ahead, go ahead. So, we have a schedule. We have a. We have a few minutes here. Marin received a letter today, which there's. No action we can take on it, but it was from a resident by the name of Mike Torella. The letter also went to um, also went to the uh, board of selectmen, and I'll read it for the record. It's uh, there are quite a few names on the on the two list, which includes uh, uh, Matthew King the. The um, Littleton Police Chief, the Planning Board, myself, Sherry Gould, Zoning Board, and uh, John McGover, John Gulliver, Highway Director. And it goes on to say, uh, we the residents of Beaver Brook and Old Great Road, Littleton, are greatly disturbed by the excessive noise, dust, and exhaust fumes caused by the constant flow of dump trucks up and down our street related to the construction of the point in Littleton. For several months, we have been barraged by the loud construction traffic Monday through Friday starting at 6 and continuing to 5 p.m. each day over the past few weeks. Beaver, Beaverbrook residents have frequently observed 
the dump trucks associated with the point travel either up or down the road every one to two minutes. The current volume of truck traffic also presents a serious safety risk to residents and their children who walk, bike, ride, and board school buses on this residential road. Mm. Beaverbrook Road is a residential road. As homeowners on this over overused road, we have uh, found our quality of life significantly impaired. Our neighborhood wishes to restore the peace and quiet to which we've been accustomed. Furthermore, the points at the point's location at the intersection of Route 119 and 495 should allow trucks to use larger roadways and reduce the disturbance on Beaverbrook Road, period. Considering the burden on the neighborhood, we propose a plan to redirect all truck traffic associated with the point off Beaverbrook Road and onto state highways utilizing routes 119, 110, 225, and possibly Route 40. We believe this proposal is manageable and would greatly reduce the distressful situation for the residents of Beaverbrook. We respectfully request your immediate attention and expeditious implementation of this proposal. Sincerely, signed Mike and Karen Terella. So this uh, was followed by a signature list of at least a dozen residents on that road. So um, I just want to point out that there's really no action this board can take on this. We can endorse the letter. The, um, the letter went to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. We can ask the role in the zoning enforcement officer to make sure that yeah. they need a gravel permit to remove all of that stuff. They no, have to. Not if it's done in conjunction with a um, with a subdivision, which but, it is. But they're also taking it off out of out of town, so they have to file well, where why it's going. Why are they going. using Beaverbrook? Because they're going uh, over right, Route 40. Right, the and dumping it at the. Uh, um, Right. They don't need a gravel removal permit because they're doing it in conjunction with um, a subdivision and, and site plan. So why did, why did Roddy and Dickey need one for Gray Farm? They, got a, they had to get a gravel permit through the town and they had to bond the road. Right, it's but that, that was before with the, yeah. It's not on Route 40 where they're dropping it. They it's come out of Forge Village. That's, right, that's not, a, but one, one that's conversation not a permit that you, one. that you issue. That's a permit that the But they need to... They need to get a permit from the selectmen to remove the gravel in the first place, even if it's part of the subdivision. So the selectmen should be handling how the gravel goes off the town of Littleton. No yeah. different than Roddy and Dickey. Roddy can't it. allow to take it out of Littleton, but I didn't realize Littleton didn't allow it to come out of You can't even take gravel out of Groton. It cannot be removed from the town. Really? They can out of Littleton, but I think they need a permit from the selectmen. So the selectmen would have had a visual yeah, one. No, and I, they, I they think, can, right, I, th I think... But I, don't, I think it's been looked at, but that's been a while ago, so it's, they could it's in their least, hands. They could at least ask Mr. Park to be a little more mm -hmm. receptive to how he gets rid of the gravel. Yeah, and I know so the what, all, did I mean, also go to... How much time would it take them to run 119 to 220? Their only other options are is to go down and down Gilson Road, right. across through that neighborhood, which is even more traffic. It's even more, mm -hmm. right? Then, or to continue down to, to Four Corners, 225, and take that's it right down asking, there, yeah. brings you down through Forge Village. And up, because that's where most of them are going to. Forge Village? It goes through Forge Village, goes out heading towards Route 40. You know where the uh, funeral parlor is over there, Healy's Funeral yeah. Parlor? Mm -hmm. the, right behind there is where, it's, where so the they all that is going. Mm -hmm. They may have been running that way because the skim job was still going on 119, but that's done no, now, right? No, they, it's, it's the shortest there. route to it because they, they'll come down, they'll take a left at the end of Beaverick Road, they'll go up in about three, four hundred yards to take a right, and that'll cut you right across over the railroad tracks oh, and put you right next to look at it. Um, yeah. page they, they got the letter. So we'll... So, so I mean, w would it be... Do you think it would be a huge burden to ask them to take it down the corners and take it down 225 as opposed to one in Gilson? I mean, how much more time are we talking no, about? I, I, I think that they would see less um, complaints setting on 119 all the way to 225. It might not even be that much out of their way by the time they stop, turn, the end of the Gilson Road, the, or the end of all that. And the speed. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be, under, wouldn't, oh, I guess what I'm saying is that if, if, if we were to endorse a I letter, I like a request, the, I like an, your idea of a nice I ask, think I think that would be a, would you please? Because our responsibility is to the town. Mr. Park residents. is coming next month, right? Why don't we, uh, why don't no, we, the we next, do it before that? They're running, they're running trucks, 20, 
If I lived in that road, I'd be pissed. A truck is going, two are going in and two are coming out. We would all, if we all lived in that road, we'd be upset. Mm. I agree with you, dude. Let's make the ask. Tell the selectman that we We want the letter to to reroute the trucks to a highway road. We stay out of the neighborhood. 19 to 225. So let let me see if I can. Not to go down through Gilson Road. Into a, and if the I other other choice is to get on 495 North and get off in Westford. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And nope. then up to the if, center. And down yeah, so who wants to? It sounds like this board wants to. Uh, the, the sense of this board wants to uh, respond to this in some fashion. Who wants to make the motion? I'll, I'll make the motion. Right. Good idea. That's a good one. Okay. Make the motion that we politely ask the developer to redirect traffic to state highways where possible and out of Littleton yeah. residential roads. Neighborhood roads, correct. Do we have a second? So, so I second we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? No, nope, that's good. I would. Um, Jerry, would you would you um, mind if we amend? If you, would you entertain an amendment to your motion to have this director go through the selectmen? No, no, I, no, why, no. Why would we, we go through the selectmen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no. I'm I'm asking the question. No. Done. All right. So that's a motion and a directive from a request from our our board. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. I'll, I'll get in touch with um, Sam and Tim tomorrow. I bet you it's a quick Great. phone call. <laughs> and give the uh, selectmen uh, due notice that we mm -hmm. we voted this oh, yeah. way. Well, they received the letter. Let's see what they do all on their own. All right. All right. Um, 830, ADA Road, reestablish concrete batching plant, site plan review, TMC leasing. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Oliver. I'm an engineer with David Ross Associates. Uh, with me tonight is Bill Bjorgard from TMC leasing, representing Middlesex. Um, as you stated, we're here tonight for a site plan approval to replace the existing concrete batch plant with a new, more modernized um, facility. I believe you're all familiar with the site. Um, so what we have is, here's the, the large concrete building as you come down Air Road, coming down the hill. The, Existing concrete plant is behind the, the facility. So the proposal is to remove the existing concrete plant in this location, uh, part of the conveyor, out to the uh, one of the accessory buildings, and replace it with the new structure. So that's located here in the starker brown color with a new conveyor uh, part of the way to the existing conveyor. The, the new structure will essentially sit on top of the footprint of the, the old structure. We're not proposing any changes to grade. The utility connections will be made to existing utilities uh, with the exception of the gas line that has to go out to Air Road. Uh, we have had some comments back from the Water Department. Uh, Mr. Beardgard has been speaking with the Water Department. They've already located a valve and kind of straightened out some confusion on how the valves out there are, are set up. So that's ongoing, um, so we should be good when they're ready to go. The proposed traffic pattern uh, for the concrete trucks entering the site and leaving the site is essentially the same as the existing traffic pattern. Uh, we'll come in through the northerly entrance, down through the plant, out through the back parking lot, and out uh, the air road. Uh, there is some traffic that comes in and out. Um, this is enter only, as far as um, we're concerned, this is the best way the traffic pattern works. Um, there was a traffic, um, traffic, a letter addressing traffic, I think, back from when we were last in for um, the, gen the, the use special permit that covered the site that talked about the traffic pattern. So that's, that's been working well. Um, existing silo structures that are back there will stay. Um, we, are, we have a, an application into the Conservation Commission uh, to get their approval. Um, again, very little site disturbance. Uh, there, there'll be construction disturbance, but then it's all paved or concrete now and will remain the same uh, once it's done. So there's no increase in runoff. There's, we haven't addressed any drainage because we're, as far as we're concerned, there's no ch change to the drainage on site. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. I'll try to be brief. Sure. I got, I got one question. Um, so, they're gonna, so people coming from 495, they run up, they're going to take a left. Where? Up here. Up there, right? Yeah. Move back around. So you know there's a no left turn right at New Estate Road? Up further up here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. No, right there. So do you, and they're 
they're going to redesign that road. It's, it's just going to be, instead of having that big wide van, it's just going to be a little hell. But the reason the state did that is because of the hump there. Okay. Do you guys anticipate having a problem with the state? Have you talked to the state about making a lot there with a truck? No, we haven't. Um, I, I guess I didn't anticipate any problem. Um, I'm, I'm just asking because they just put that sign there a couple of years ago and they just side of the uh, sight line is up. So, so there's, there's no well, left in this way? There's no left in there and it's because right where you are mm -hmm. is where the hump is. Right. I, I mean, I know our sight distances are good, um, if, but as far as making the actual left, um, I mean, that's what the current traffic does now. Granted, we're going to be putting the con concrete trucks back out here. Um, You'll still be getting your material from across the street too, correct? I assume so, yeah. Dave? Yeah. You guys haven't playing well together? That's yet to be determined. Okay. What about all the other <coughs> equipment that's stored over there? Is that all going? This is all going to be you controlling the whole site? Um, I don't think Support there's any... Support of excavation, you mean? Is that all going? All the other equipment, all the middle six, all the construction equipment that's over there now, that's all going? This is just going to be a batching plant like it was oh, before? No, the garage and everything that's there will remain there. No, but I'm talking all the, par the parking lot, the big, huge parking lot there that has all the equipment in it now. Well, that equipment stay in that parking lot. That equipment is cycled through through the jobs. It right. comes in, repaired, and goes back. But that's asphalt equipment. This is going to be this concrete. Is be concrete. So it's all going to be concrete equipment over there. Yeah. yeah. No that asphalt. portion of the site. Yeah. So your cement mixes and everything are going to be stored over there overnight, and everything's going to be parked over there. Right. So why can't you still come in and out of the same? The old days used to come in and out the same way, right down there. Why do you have to come out up there or in up there? That, that's the pattern to get them through the batch plant. But the, used, the old days used to come down through the batching plant, right? I don't know. I don't well, we're still going to come through the batching plant. This way or this way? Through, through the, the, the engine from the top. top. From the north. You're going to come down to the batching plant. Right. Right. Pick up your concrete and keep going. Correct. And try to avoid backing up at all times of the truck. Well, why can't you come this way through the batching plant? And go out the top? Or no, so I, take I it a left come in and excuse turn me, take it through. Taking a left from the top, coming up the street, is is re, is is a position where you don't have a lot of traffic where you can't see what's there because you are the biggest vehicle going. So taking a left there and taking a right and coming from air, that makes the most sense. Yeah. To go down the bottom, you got a larger, much longer flat area to be able to see in both directions. Plus, if they're going to go left, it's better off for the trucks to to get a run at that hill to go up the hill. Right from down below. From down below. Right. So. Again, the way they have it flowed, flowing seems the most have logical you, way to bring the trucks in and out. Have you have you you've gone to the site? What's that? Have you been to the site? Yes. Well, what do you, I, I don't know. I'm just saying the state put a no left turn there for a reason. I don't know if you're going to have trouble. That's because where it's at, where they enter is further up. It's right. on top of the hump. The, the, yeah, I mean the best site distance. To come in. Right. So when you're on top of that hump, right? Right. You can't see. I mean, I know this because I take that turn like five times a day. But yeah. You can't see anything yet. When you're taking a left at the when top you're, of the hill. The top of the hill is a huge drop off, and you can't see. So you're like, when you take a left, I don't know what you Sometimes you have to slow down to see anything coming this way, and you can't really see it until you get about like right there. Okay. So you're, I mean, if you're coming up here and you're. You're making, and he's stopping, waiting to make this turn. The left isn't where your finger is, it's much further higher. No, I know. Way higher. Up here. You're right. So when he, if he was just, basically, there's a traffic jam back here, nobody back here is going to see it until they crest the hump. If they stop trying to take a turn, no you won't see it, see it. You until, you're right see it top. until you're right on top. Until you're right here. You know, the size of the concrete trucks, the height. I mean, dry, dry, take a drive. It's a pretty, it's, they talk, I mean, it's a pretty significant hump. Mm -hmm. What happens in the morning? So, so you're going to have 20 cement trucks, say, 30 cement trucks? You're all parked down here in the morning. How are you going to load them? You're going to go up there and come around? No, at that point, we'd have to cycle through the... Uh, You'd cycle the this eye. way? Yeah. You'd cycle up and out? No, no. You'd still go out the bottom. There's only going to be one-way traffic. Right, so you go out this way with an empty truck, come up the road, come, come back down inside. We could do it that way. But he just said that they're going to stay inside the, and just cycle those ones inside the parking lot, start the, the batch process, and go back out the way they, the lower you. Is that what you said? We try not to back up the trucks mm -hmm. whenever we can avoid it. Right. And the plant <coughs> is designed for one-way traffic through the plant again 
Pussy. Hey, I just wanted to say I'm not asking these questions because I think your plan's got a problem. I'm just I'm just trying to ask you if you've thought about the fact that you've got this traffic situation with New Estate Road and, and all that. Have you thought we of gave it a lot of thought. Okay, to just ask. Design, and I believe that the, I don't think there was any comments from anybody regarding the green yes. traffic flow. Um, no, there were no comments regarding traffic flow. Um, the police department did take a look at it, and they didn't have any concerns. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Just, uh, and I don't know if this helps maybe um, address. I, I mean, the trucks that come in there now are taking that left. I haven't heard of any problems. Um, I mean, it, that is a potential situation. I understand what you're saying. If someone's flying up the road and they come to that crest and there's a, a truck waiting there. Um, I haven't heard of that happening. Granted, there'll be concrete trucks now, so um, it will be slightly different. I guess I don't anticipate a problem, um, but that's not to say, you know. Which direction? And just, the, just so you guys know, during school, mm -hmm. that traffic is backed up all the way past New State Road until about 7:20 until the high school is done. So there's a traffic jam all the way past the light, all the way up to where you are, all year long. We have, we have our own safety people and whatnot, and our trucks are mandated to follow the pattern that you see there. Which because we've right? determined that it's the safest for us and ours. But here's I'm telling you, when we leave there to go to head towards 495 at the center of Littleton, you're going to be hitting traffic. It's, it's oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. yeah. Now, the only, as far as the site's concerned, where you're gonna, the existing tower is a battleship gray, square looking building. Is that, that's the batching plant, correct? That's mm -hmm. correct. Is that going to be upgraded in some form? Is yeah, that it's um, taken down that's all taken down? You're going to make it look real pretty. Maybe some granite and some, <laughs> there's some the, arches um, and some lady and windows. I drove by there today. Some gables. Yes. Yeah. I drove by there today, and there's um, uh, I think there's poison ivy growing on it. Well, that's kind of you know, if you just change it from poison to the other, we don't call it the uh, Harvard West. The plant comes down in its entirety. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't see any. The last question no, I, I have on the on the traffic was: uh, Was this the direction that it used to um, that the old batching plant ran their trucks to? Do we know? To the best of my knowledge, yeah. it's been this has been existing since the late forties. Yeah. Now, how many trucks a day do you, do you remember, or does anybody know that the old batching plant ran through in the heyday? It probably ran 80 to 100 out of there at least a day. They were going right across the street to it because yeah. they're yeah. service over there. Okay, I have no issue because that's what you're running now. That's what right. you'll be the running. Capacity, now. everything remains the same. Yeah. It's just that the old facility is beyond repair that you're fitting. It's just All right. done. Oh, that's great. All right. yeah. so, um, Marin, is there any any further? No, uh, Mark, you had asked if Green had looked at that. Um, there's no uh, grading changes proposed, so no need to. They didn't do any new drainage calculations. It's all existing pavement, all existing impervious. Same catch basin, same mm -hmm. way the settling tanks out on the back, all right. that stuff. What they did was they provided the operation and maintenance guidelines for the stormwater system, and we can reference that in, in the decision. Yeah. Okay. And I think, was it back in 2013 or 14? Um, there were a bunch of outstanding orders and conditions on the site that got cleaned up in the process. I want to say that the drainage system was cleaned and um, a new operation and maintenance manual was provided then. So we provided that um, with this application. So all that's already in place, the maintenance and, and ongoing operation of that, that system. As part, of the, as part of the special use permit, there was outstanding conditions well before my time that it just lingered. We went through, cleaned them all up, did all the ponds, did everything we needed to do, had two or three inspections by the Conservation Commission, and we filed quarterly reports with them. We inspected, we self inspect the site, and we filed quarterly reports with them, which we're current on. Now, you say you, you popped the grates off and you went down to the manholes and you cleaned those everything's manholes clean. out. Everything's clean. And, they, the ponds, and the spillways. Everything. We restoned all the, uh, the, uh, the sluiceways, yeah. we cut down the brush. And uh, they, were, they were satisfied and did the quarterly reports. And you continue, to, you continue to do that. The quarterly report. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I have no issue with this. Issue. What, what, uh, Aaron? The um, since this is a site plan decision, and uh, major industrial special use permit as well. Okay, I just referenced that was the last decision that you made on this was from December 2013. 
Okay. So I believe you have a copy of a draft. Well, I forgot to put draft at the top of the site plan decision for 80 air room. All right. So, um, site plan decision. The, the conditions. For site plan. Do you need a motion for this? Yes. Start on the bottom motion, of page one. Motion to approve. Motion to approve the site plan decision with the uh, with the following conditions. Now, uh, the uh, we're using the same conditions you've included in the site plan decision, Aaron, with the only change that you've the quarterly re report. Is that the only change? Those yeah, we'll add that in. The quarterly report will go to the yeah. Conservation Commission. Yeah. I'll just say that they'll comply with the O&M manual okay. for the stormwater system. And that O&M manual includes cleaning and, and the reports. Good. Any other comment on any of the conditions? All right. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ice have it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we keep the cost under a buck and a quarter a yard? Huh. Any chances? We'll get the planning board discounts. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? I haven't bought concrete hmm? in a while. Depends on the mix. It's anywhere from 80, 90, 110. It's down that low again? Depending on the mix. Yeah. You know, a slush foundation mix or something like that. You don't get it all. You're actually slurry. Who will be? Finest on the 3 8s. That's where the money comes. This is TMC leasing. Who will be the who? What name will be on the trucks? Uh, again, that would be determined. I'm not sure if it's going to be TMC leasing, Middlesex, or but the the to take care of that. Very good. Um, when do you think you'll have your plant up and operating? We plan for um, the timeline that we have now is late early fall. How many local employees will you be hiring? Um, that depends on the number of drivers, but the people that operate the plant, two or three, it's as long as you have to do that. We have a lower operator plant operator, maintenance people. Right. And we like to do the maintenance with the ambulance. Good. Good job. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. We've got 15 minutes to go. Mm -hmm. All right, Richie, you're ahead of schedule. Right. Woo-hoo! Huh? How'd you manage this? Nine o'clock. A little early for a nine o'clock. I knew that we need a little bit of time in there somewhere, but what are we doing now? Get the point for lunch. I'm not gonna tell you. I mean, going back to Donnie's. That's cool. Oh, it's easier. I got that. That's just I just they got better food. No, I don't think so. I do. What do you have? I don't know. I have my sons. Which one's this for? Oh, yeah. yeah. okay. New comments. Um, Bruce will walk you through this. What is this for? Two spectacles. What is two spectacles upon? This is. Are they even coming? Yeah. Really I still think they're going to have a traffic problem there. Oh, I definitely think so. Did, Mark, when you asked the question about the circle of traffic, because I didn't get a clear answer on that, is he, are they not going to pull the trucks out in the morning to go make that left-hand turn? He didn't say no, they he are. Did not say he said in the answer. morning they were going to stay inside, yeah. Yeah. that they would cycle inside the... So the, I the, that uh, means he's going to have to stack all his trucks up in a line. That's right. And does he have enough... I don't think he's got enough linear feet to stack 18 trucks up. Yeah, he does in the parking lot, he does. Yeah. No, not behind the plant up to the no, road. No, no, he's going yeah. so to have to cool. run... He's going to run them in the parking lot. They can go either way. They'll, don't tell me they can't load it either way. According to the site plan, no. He's got one traffic flow yeah. inside that plant. He's, that's what they want. That doesn't mean you have to do it. It means in the morning he's got to come out, go on the oh, road, right. and go around. Yeah, there's no way for him to come so. out with that traffic. There's no way. It's a nightmare. There's no way. They're gonna, he's going to be screaming at him. <laughs> 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 they're going to be loading them inside. They're going to have it. 
right up and out. That's when did that plant shut down? Because that's been shut down years. for a long time. Yeah, it's been 10 years. Like yeah. two years after I moved in. Yeah, so it's been at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. Two, maybe? Yeah. 12, yeah, 10, 12 wow. years. Yeah. So that's 13 years. It was running for a mm -hmm. little while, and there wasn't much. Oh, it used to feed the, the uh, pre-stress across the way most of the time. Mm -hmm. That went on done with the barrel ties and everything else, and then yeah, Middlesex bought it and started storing the asphalt stuff there. So. Did you hear we got a nice nitrogen fueling station that might be going in behind uh, air gas? Yeah, you know who it's for, Richard? Tell me, Mac. Toyota. Really? Mm hmm. What for the tires? Little did Toyota? It's for all the Toyotas. It's going to be little. T Toyota is coming out with hydrogen cars. Yes. And they need a place to put the hydrogen, and that's going to be in little things. Tom, Tom, Tom uh, the deputy was was in here yesterday. Was talking to us. He actually, they actually had the car in, in the back parking lot here. Mm -hmm. It was like a uh, what do you say, a yeah. Camry or something? Yeah. You couldn't tell the difference except that when you got inside, it was just like mm. super duper with all the gauges. And right. oh, yeah, that's going to be their first um, hydrogen plant. It's like going to be in Littleton. Mm -hmm. Looked like the inside of a. Yeah. They. We're supposed yeah. to apply for August, and then they were going to apply for September, and now I haven't heard from them for a while. So. What's, the, what's the range on a fuel cell? 400. Is that what it is? He says they had two fuel cells. This will be one. They had the other one in Connecticut. So you can, you can drive to the one in Connecticut filled and then drive home, but then you've got to drive back to Connecticut yeah, to so get it filled. Yeah, so what good is that? So until they get more fuel cells. 100 miles? Yeah. Uh, on a fill. Full yeah. That's fine. And, and all you all you see come out the tailpipe is water, he says. Hmm. We'll do that on any cold day. How much how much is that? But how much is the car? They say if you lease the car for four hundred bucks, they'll they'll fill it with fuel for free. Really? If you right. lease the car for four hundred bucks. Right. They they, they they want to include all the maintenance and the fueling for the first you know, I'll just wait for the test. We all get used to it. For, but, but how much? No, he's coming out. With, he's coming up with a thirty thousand dollar Tesla. Yeah, I know. Who's that? that? Oh, Tesla. Tesla. Thirty thousand dollars. Ah, that's my car. Yeah, but there's a plant in the, there's a warehouse yeah. in the, like Watertown. Yeah. The, uh, the showroom. Yeah. The Tesla showroom. Yeah. But you buy them online. Yeah, yeah you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. But that you can buy. Tesla, you can. You you're supposed to be able to buy. Battery, you pop your battery out, yeah, pop yeah. a new one in. Like so you, don't, you don't have to worry about charging it. You just hand it back to the station and they just give you a new one. A friend of mine bought a Tesla mm -hmm. and he drove it from here to Texas and you, they have a wicked um, GPS or whatever it is. They know where no, you are and what's wrong with your car. You can, really? It tells you exactly where all the, all the charging stations are so that it plots your plan according to where you can charge your car. And it takes Tesla, only 20 minutes to charge Tesla them. knows where your car is and what's wrong with it at any, at any time. Isn't that cool? Okay, so here's the best reason to buy a hybrid. If you fly, you've got the entire sixth floor open to you, preferred parking. I'm oh, Logan? Never have to worry about getting a parking space. Really? So why don't you just put those little fake... Charger things in your car. Well, I have a hybrid. I have, I have, I have a... Are uh, you a Prius? No, a but uh, it's a Fusion. Ford Fusion. Ford Fusion. I can park any time I want. <laughs> and they let you you just go up there and have a glass of wine just because you can. Just because I can. Listen to the fans in and out. Get a 9 o'clock flight. You don't have to worry about parking out. And Are they coming, by the way? No. Can talking? you borrow your car? Cutting Let's into go to Boston? drinking. So you got a you got a fusion, Jerry. What um, for a weekend? That's that's not all. Electric it's no, it's hybrid. Mm -hmm. Gas and battery mix. It's gas, similar to okay. a Prius, right? like a Prius then. Similar. Yeah, same idea. Yeah. It's way better. The what do you NASCAR chassis? September twenty fourth. What do you get for mileage on something like that? It's stop and go traffic. It's like way. You're not using any nothing. The Peter, throw me a candy. It's been on the highway. You're using. Might as well, I was killing time. If nobody comes, we should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you're not buying it for for highway. <laughs> if you're buying a hybrid, it's because you're. I, I bought it because Did I was like commuting one? to Boston. Uh, oh, yeah. All right. So the last time I tried to throw it that far. Commute. Not, not if if you're like nice driving. <laughs> cross Are you here for the stone yard, by the way? Really saving it anyway. No, we're here um, on the lane, just to give you a. An informal look at if you want to split up the lot. 
It's an informal discussion. It's up to you guys if you, you want to do that forward? early. Why don't we have it now? Yeah. Let's move on. Do it in five minutes? Yes. All right. Awesome. That's, that's all you got. <laughs> Gladly. Um, I have some smaller versions of what we're proposing here. You know, to take a look. Just so this is property. Just for the just for the uh, public. What are we talking about here? Um, we are talking about property at two cricket lanes owned by the, the Sam Bowles, um, who are here with me tonight. Um, I believe they've been before and spoken with you about this. Thank you. Um, essentially, what we'd like to do is. And for those of you who haven't, um, we're just tuning in now. Your name. If you're just tuning in, my name is Robert Oliva. I'm an engineer with David Ross Associates. Great. Um, um, so essentially, they have a, an existing lot with frontage on Cricket Lane. Their existing house is here. There's an existing right of way that comes back to a couple of lots here. Um, what we're asking to do is use that right of way as frontage for an additional lot um, at the back of theirs, which would include all the way up to Spec Pond. Um, we know there's wetlands out here, so we have to meet the, the uplands area. Um, according to where we have wetlands from an old plan, we have the minimum, which I believe we have 36,000 square feet on a 40,000 square foot lot. So we have frontage, an area, um, we'd have to confirm the wetland line to be able to show our upland. Um, but that's that's the plan, is just simply to carve off one lot from the existing. Didn't, didn't we have this here before mm -hmm. us so about Two years ago or a year ago? We've had it a couple of times. Order. You wanted to see a, a plan, but that's what the plan That's the one where, where we were looking at having the driveway come in on the right or the left. Correct. Okay. So what we're doing now is looking to use that existing right away. And that creates the one. And that, to use that as frontage. You can't. 152 feet. Care. You can't use it right away as front. It's, they have to have it. has to be part of the lot. But it also has to be cricket lanes a private way, right? Correct. It has to be on a public way, and it's more than 700 feet away. These are stuff that we talked about. You've come, they've come in a number of times about this, and it hasn't changed. It's still a, pr a private road. It's a private road to all the houses that are out there in the on the it's a private um, um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, it used to be a, a way to the beach all the beach houses that used to be there. it's oh, it's private way it's more than 750 feet 750 feet from Stephon Road Stephon Road yeah the Cricket Lane is, all, is, is, is what that's private also no yes I don't, I don't the problem is, if we do it for you, we have to do it for everybody else that's on their road. We'll let them put A and R lots in. That's Cricket Lane's owned by us. It's all, it's that's, that's exactly the issue. It's owned by you. It's on a public road. You can't put. You have no frontage. You have to have frontage on a public way in order to do an A and R lot. Well, I, and I don't remember the exact wording of it, but I remember when Sherry was here last. Sherry Bruce was here last night with us, and she, she talked about how you could use that. Existing way that right away heading down towards because it was already an existing road used for but the There's no frontage, you have to have frontage that, that was the frontage that she was using. And I'm not a lawyer to that, but thing. it's not you have to have frontage on a uh, to do an approval not required. You need to have frontage on a approved road, not a road that you own. It doesn't give you any frontage on a public way. You need frontage on a public way. Mark, you keep saying public, and that's not quite right. It has to be a way that you guys determine is adequate. It's the, it, they own the road. Well, it's not it's not adequate. Everybody else is on that road. There's right, no and drainage. That, and that's, right, that's the determination. There's no drainage. Made, right. There's no fire suppression there. There's nothing. It's got, it serves like 40 houses. No turnaround, no drainage. It's a private way. What's the width of Cricket Lane? Uh, it varies. Get away. Yeah, so that looks like it's it's less than 50 feet um, down here. It's narrowing down as you get home. But they own Cricket Lane. They own Cricket Lane. So, so you're 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 here just for an informal, right? It, it, it's an informal. I mean, we're looking for the board's input. Um, 
I mean, I'm going to agree things. with Mark. The same as the last time. You know, you know, I you just keep throwing houses at the end of thing and the end of thing and the end of thing, and there's no way to get a, a you know a, a fire truck back there to turn nothing to turn around back there. The emergency vehicles can't turn around, and you're you're creating you know buildable lot out of it has no right to be a buildable lot. If um, my if, opinion. Okay, no, and, and that's 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 why we're here. Um, what if we were to propose some kind of improvements to allow turning for emergency vehicles? And bring the uh, well, water cricket lane up to yeah. current standards, put the water water in, put uh, mm -hmm. curbs in, granite curbs and sidewalks, and go all the way back to the, to the to the to the point and have a big enough turnaround or a 75 foot radius for a turnaround. But I mean, oh. if they gave it to the town and got it approved, then well, then the would be gone, right? Was yeah. no, they, now you got frontage for it if you want. I'd like to. I'd like to see if we could check with town council to see what the. I don't want to run things. We don't need. What this I, is not a town council. What our limitations I are on using private lane. Correct. But they have to have frontage on something. You that's that's. I know. They don't have any frontage. They well, use it right away. I Richard, though, we should find out if, yeah, if it, it doesn't have to be a public way. It was, it, right, but uh, you can. <laughs> that's in the A and R handbook. Right. So you can just so it doesn't have needs. to be public. It has to be in a, a road that we could approve. It I needs agree with frontage. you. That it doesn't have any frontage. It's a fr it's it's fronting a right of way. It has to have actual. It can't front a right of way. It has to be on a road. There's no road there. This part. I know. There's no, no road there. Mark, uh, what? And and I think that, I think that you're wrong. You have to have frontage on a, on something. And and the right of way may be. Acceptable. That's why I want to run it by Richard, town said, council. Richard, this is it's, privately it's owned road, though, Richard. And it, you do it according to the A and R. It's town council's not going to weigh in on oh. what your decision should be. Oh. We have a subdivision Richard, control law. This is a private road, right? They own it. So if I yeah. buy this lot and they say I can't use that road anymore, what are my options? What happens to all the other lots on that road? There's tons of there's tons of open space on that whole road. If you let them do it, then everyone else is going to want to keep the dark road. Jerry's got yeah. a good question. I'm just is sure. Cricket Lane a right of way to all the lots? <coughs> Cricket Lane is a right of way, except there's a big field opposite. They have no rights in. Why don't Why don't they have any rights? It's because on the, it's because on when the they on the deeds that were built, the houses that are to the uh, I was explaining to us that goes on road, mm -hmm. they all got right of way. So on, when when that land was divided, they now have actually have Cricket Lane. They they can they have the ways on them. Couldn't so is Cricket Lane it says the right to okay. use with others. To enter and leave for the sole purpose of, correct? Is that how it reads? I'm not sure exactly, but I, I couldn't. So, Capitol Hill was that big field right next to you. Can't he, can't, he, he cannot, cannot, he cannot come out there. He, no, no right he right. used to have it at the corner. It used to be Jones. But he sold They it. sold that. So, so they has, have no the right. The field has no right onto the Cricket Lane. So, they cannot come in to Cricket Lane to build the field. But Cricket Lane, you're telling us, has a legitimate right of way. Yes. And what yes. you're doing here is you're giving. Uh, a right of way off that right of way. So the houses that were all built there, that would, they all they, they had it before we even were there. No, they, but, those houses were this but, to, but to create this new lot, you're 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 running a right of way off of a right of way. Right. There's, an, there's an existing right of way here. This 25 foot right of way. Who owns that's the right on, of way? That's that's on this where? lot. Right. So so they would have exist so. Would they have, by extension, a right away on the Cricket Lane? I'm sure if if a lot was created and deeded off, it would have language with the right to pass when you pass over the Cricket Lane. If the don't solve that problem. If the entire parcel mm -hmm. has still doesn't have front. Yeah, if the entire parcel front. has a right away, and they Unless, carve off I don't a piece. Think you, I don't think you can create frontage no. by by granting a right away. You certainly. On a I think you way, certainly can. On a no, private. You can't. Yeah, I, I just uh, I don't do it. Why? You it has to be then. then it's all right, not so all right, let's go to Moore Lane. It doesn't. What? Yeah, 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 let's go to Moore Lane. So Moore let's assume Moore Lane. Lane. Nothing yeah, preventing us from doing it. It's only so it wide. It, it, right, it's not a town road, but they just keep building things on it. So they all keep right. extending things on it, and they keep building things on it. But it's only a right away. So does it mean, have to be? But where I said doesn't have to be a town road. Okay, but now now it has to be adequate. It has, it has to be adequate. adequate. It's not adequate. It's not adequate. It's not adequate. And so we determine what that adequacy is. And and adequacy to me would mean that there has to be some way that a fire truck can so come in and turn you, around. You have you have you have a right of way. As long as a deed gives them 
access to the first right of way, and Cricket Lane is a right of way, which connects them to a public road, and we deem that to be adequate under NNR. Why couldn't we approve it? The other problem is it's over 750 feet from the road. No, no, you you're, cannot. You're, you're missing the point, Mark. No, we're I'm deeming not. the right of way. 750 the, feet from the right of way. Yeah. But we're deeming not. No, no, no. We're deeming you're mixing apples, lane, and, apples you have, and oranges. You have to mix. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. You have to go to the next standard. It, if, you, if you're considering Cricket Lane a right of way, it can, you can only develop at 750. Our bylaw says it can only be developed 750 feet in. That's past 750. How many feet? feet? No. How many feet is that lawn in? Thousand, fifteen hundred feet away. But is Cricket from Lane up Cricket to lane. town standards? From Spectrum no, no, Pond. from Cricket All right. Lane. Lane. You know what? You can't count because <laughs> we're dead in roads. We're after a, we're after a nine o'clock public uh, hearing. Right. Town um, standards for a road. So if you come it, back with uh, some some uh, proposal that, uh, that that identifies a way that you can use Cricket Lanes right, right away. And to create another, well, you say this other right of way is, is and adequacy for for uh, fire services. And and I would strongly suggest you run this by fire services before you even come by here. Um, and I'd certainly consider it. I wouldn't. You open up a can of worms, allowing private roads, frontage on private roads. Well, that that's your opinion. I don't see if we if we have the the ability to create. Um, Passage on a, a on a we right don't. of way. It's private. It's somebody's driveway. We do. We have a shared. We do. We have a shared common driveway. They don't even meet we, the shared common driveway. It, because it's a right of way. It, it's a driveway. That's all it is. It's a dri glorified driveway. It's twelve feet wide. It's a driveway. He says it's fifty feet wide. It's not fifty feet wide. The might be not the wide. access. The the. The, the right lane. Itself. But look how yeah. small it gets, Richard. It but starts to get even smaller. Yeah, but he's not putting anything past it. But yeah. not, it doesn't not matter. It's the principle of so it. Okay, what if what if Cricket Lane was made improved to be a road? It has to be accepted by the town. It has to, you have to run to the you can't just circumvent subdivision. It has to it has to pass muster. It has to be either Jerry's got a good point. A road up to subdivision to standard, make it work and hard. or it has yeah. to be accepted by the town. Or it has to be laid out. These roads never been laid out. This was an old lake road where it had a lot of cottages. White Tail Way's so never been not? accepted by the town how either. How would you know that? White Tail Way was. How White Tail's a public way. How would you know that this it's was all, an old lake road? It's all farmhouses. Uh, it's all lake houses down there. But how would you know? We never accepted it. I went down there and took a look at it today. When? What's today? A, what's, what's the one past White Tail and the other one that's the, the Roddy Palmer's did. That's that's an accepted way. Roddy Palmer, Whitetail, and and it's, it doesn't Palmer. have its finished binding code on it, does it's it? Not, Gray Farm's not accepted yet because it's, it's not, not ex completed yet. It's no. not accepted it's yet. It's a subdivision but road. It's a subdivision road. A subdivision, subdivision that's still under construction. It went through the subdivision yeah. process. This but never went through the process. All right, now just out of hate, Whitetail. Yeah, is Whitetail a town accepted road? Mm -hmm. And it does. I thought it didn't. It only had the binder coat down. I don't think it ever had the no, finished coat. No, you think Great Farm isn't? Great Farm only has the binder. Is, is the one that's okay. okay. And All that's right. And that's been in, in. See, that's the problem think, we're going to end up having. I think the like closer that you can, along, you can come to the, meeting the, 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 the bylaw. We don't accept the road after the, the road is already been. Bylaw. But we have money. We have money. We have a hundred thousand dollar bond. So then, then how the road should last twenty five years? I would certainly. It's only got ten years. It would certainly help me. I think they should work towards a solution. I do they too. Have to, they have to bring the road up to subdivision standards. I Thanks. agree. I agree with that that statement. If, if you bring the road up, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about. Road. You're talking about drainage, subsurface, and pavement and fire. There's no. There's no fire suppression there. Cricket to the zoning bylaw. I, I, I Cricket lane is paved. There's. Uh, and maybe it's not defined well enough, but there's. Uh, you have to determine. Uh, access and the adequacy of access. Yes. That's, right. I don't believe that infers you need to have a, a roadway up to the no. standards. No. Um, it's a private road. I, I understand. You've got a real problem with the pr fact that it's a private road. I don't think there's anything to stop you from splitting lots on private ways. I don't think so either. I don't either. I, I definitely think there is. Well, then. then then why this do we have subdivision control laws? Why do we do subdivisions if roads are private? Right, because because this is the ANR. This is approval not required under the subdivision control law, and it's <laughs> Massachusetts is way out there and as far as that kind of planning goes. Um, it but, doesn't meet okay, any so of our bylaws. It's one lot. You're thinking you yes, for Mark's them, thinking you gotta no. Do it for everybody. Jerry, you're no. thinking that with if you can find it adequate. 
I'm no, thinking, no. yeah, if they come back with a good improvement plan that shows that this is a viable access, then this right of way becomes a point at which we measure, and I don't see why they can't do it. And I would just, my what only would, caveat to that would be what would make, make uh, the services meet your standards of acceptable starting point for frontage? Who I don't know. Him? Which is why I'm asking them to figure that out. I'm not really sure whether, I mean, I'm thinking if it's 22 feet wide, does it have a turnaround at the end of it? Should have a, yeah, should, have, should have, accommodate a fire truck. Does it have fire suppression coming to that point? Does it have curbs? Does it have... So you're saying they got to run a water line down for a fire agent? Sure. So we... I'm asking, what's your... Because what's we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't do that with... with uh, yeah, everybody does that. Lane. That's a, now you're entering... Lane was already, was already a, it's a been mess. A since 1895, this could become, this could become more Lane. Went so, to court on that one. Because once you let them you do it, everybody else is going to jump on it. I don't think there's that much land to develop. Snake out of the bag. There's a lot of issues. All right, all right. We got to get on to the next issue here. Thank you. I will look at it some more and come back with some answers. I'm, I'm optimistic. Yeah. Great examples too. Thank you. Great. Thank Other you. Towns Thank even. You. Take a look at state law. Boy, you can get like a hater. Next. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Because we've seen it. Now we're 10 minutes behind. We're 10 minutes ahead. Now we're 10 minutes behind. We're going to offer some solutions to that. Fire code? They don't want to do anything. I know. Big big bucks. All right. We're about to start our 9 o'clock. And it's 12 past 9. My apologies. Uh, public hearing, water resources, <coughs> special permit, two spec upon road. The Little, Town of Littleton Planning Board will hold a public hearing on Thursday, August 20th, 2015, at 9 p.m. in room 103 at Town Hall 37 Shattuck Street to consider the application for special permit pursuant to Mass General Law 40A and the Code of the Town of Littleton Zoning. Hey. The application is for a water resource district special permit under Section 173-61 through 173-64 of the Code of the, Littleton, of the Town of Littleton Zoning. Property location, two spectacle upon road. Assessor's map R-222, parcel 9-1, owner applicant stoneyard.com, LLC. The applicant is seeking approval to resolve site compliance concerns and allow additional site improvements within water resource district. Applicant and application and plans can be viewed at the planning board and town clerk's office during the business hours. Any person interested or interested or wishing to be heard on the proposed plan should appear at the time and place designated. We'll provide comment too. By August 18th, 2015, Ed Mullen. Well, thank you, Ed. Um, Bruce, you've, you've done a, a great job here putting together a huge amount of stuff for us here. Don't Documentation. Give any, uh, goes to Kyle. So, Kyle who? is uh, a relatively new addition to our office, and uh, he's been uh, spearheading a lot of that. Um, well, it's interesting because I noticed the difference. The thoroughness. <laughs> hey. Who was, who well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I think there's a part that was missed out of the uh, Who was going to notice. present tonight? I'll start. Okay. That was the part where we're going to turn this into a tiki bar. Or, I'm sorry. or um, you said tiki bar. For the public, uh, okay. please introduce yourself. Karaoke, that's what it is. Nobody here. All right, good evening. This is Bruce Ringwall from uh, GPR. Um, this uh, is or I am? I am. I am. This is I am. It's, it's very good. It's a late night. You know what can I tell you? Um, also with me this evening is uh, Kyle Parchman? Burchard. Burchard, okay. Um, get these things right one of these days. So a as read, um, <coughs> this is for stoneyard.com, uh, Two Spectacle Pond Road, and I believe that back in 1998 you had a submission from Ross's office um, in 2000 and Nine, you had a submission from our office for some addendum of some space over here and a little addendum of space over here. Um, in the interim between 98 and now, that's 17 years, uh, there's been several different filings with the Conservation Commission each of these times, but several that apparently didn't make it to this board. Um, and so we're here tonight to try to bring all these different pieces together um, show you where the project has been and taking it through the various different meetings that it's gone through and the different spots and uh, hopefully wrap it up and answer all the questions in very short order that were addressed in the enforcement order from um, Roland back in May. 
to start with, the existing conditions from the post development of 2009 to the existing slash proposed conditions today in 2015 are identical in every line category. The amount of land is the same, the building space is the same, the paved areas, the graveled areas are totally in purpose. We are within an OC, but we would not knock for a water resource protection district. Our total impervious area on the property is, for all practical purposes, 46%, 45.95%. Also, while I'm on the, the cover sheet here, I'm going to address, I want to just address the parking that we're going to come back to in the whole process. And the parking on the site, based on the parking calculations of one space for 250 gross square feet of building area, or of one space for 2.25 employees. And we've gone by the 2.25 employees, the 24 employees. And it requires 20 spaces, and we have 22 spaces, 22 spaces that we've provided. Now, <coughs> when we submitted the plan, we didn't have our color printer working well. So you've got this, but you've got an 11 by 17 that was in color. And I'm going to jump over all that and go to this is what your 11 by 17 looked like, but only on a large scale. After this package came in, Morin made a suggestion that it might be easier to break this up into the four different sets. This top plan is the two Ross plans, the 98 Ross plan, followed up by the um, 2004 Ross plan that went to the Conservation Commission, but not to your board. The plan on the bottom has the 2009 plan that GPR did to both, and this plan here with bubbles around the areas. So, confuse you all, I hope they're not. We have broken this off into four different sheets to break it up into what the four different steps were. So is this what we have in our package? Nope. This was a, a suggestion and several extra copies that we followed through with so that you can see more clearly what was shown on the plan that was in your package. So it's the same information, it's just broken up into a couple different sheets. So this is the 98 plan done by Ross. Uh, the areas that were gravel, the building, the paved areas, the drainage area, open storage area. And then, and this was what the planning board reviewed back in 98. So between this and what we gave you for the development of this piece back here and the development of this corner over here, there's been other changes along the edge and the drainage space and, and through here have all changed. So if we take a look at this 2004 plan, again by Ross, went to the Conservation Commission, was approved by the Conservation Commission. It kept the gravel dirt area up here, kept the paved areas. It showed a few more of the areas where they had uh, trailers and different things set up on the site. It opened up a big portion that was just drainage before down along next to the edge of wetlands, being drainage and pro product storage down along the edge here. And then it added in the new drainage, which was a drain, a swale conveying water from the intersecting sections of Air Road, Spectacle Road, down through the site, all the way through, and into a detention basin, plus collecting their site's drainage and into that detention basin on the site. This detention basin also went through both CONCOM in here. In the process of dealing with the Conservation Commission, our office has been to Ross's office, to Moran's office, to the conservation office, all over the place trying to get a hold of these drainage calcs and they're in the name and they don't exist. They don't know, we can't find them. We've tried to recreate them the best we can. They can't be found. 2009? 2000. 2009 GPR got involved with them. We did an application for the Conservation Commission and for the Planning Board to create a storage area back in the back, crossing a, a, the wetlands and through here, not crossing the wetlands, but uh, allowing for the drainage to continue by building up the roadway because the drainage overflowed from one area to the other occasionally. 
and we put in drainage to allow that. Put in a basin, a drainage basin for any of the runoff from this area. We also addressed an area down over in here for storage, which wasn't part of it. We showed, we did a new survey on the site, and we showed within the storage areas that previously had been approved by the board how they have now have concrete waste blocks to create dividers so that they can have different materials in different areas rather than just piles and they had a way of dividing stuff up on the site. And last but not least, in 2015, we have uh, the plan that looks just like the 2009 plan except for minor changes of where the waste block dividers are. They constantly are moving around. And then most importantly, we address the parking. This parking has kind of been an issue that's come and gone over the years in different areas and different places. <clears throat> As you come in off the of Spectacle Pond Road, in a previous plan, they had done planting along uh, Spectacle Pond Road. That plant material is doing quite well up there. But they created a fenced in area up in here where they've been parking, uh, and an area over here where they've been parking and then they've been parking down the side of the road. What we've done in discussions with them is suggested that they move their parking from just haphazard in there, just crowding everybody in, so that we have designated spaces, seven spaces, so that it's over 10 feet away from the edge of uh, the right of way as required by the zoning. And the same with these three spaces over here. And then they have to modify some of their storage area down below to make 11 spaces um, down in here for the balance of the 22 spaces plus the handicap space right outside the office um, where they have can make handicap access and accessibility into the building. That is kind of an overview of what's happened from year to year or year to year section to session on here. Um, with that, I'm going to flip back to our site plan is part of this mission, the non-color, the pretty thing. Again, parking spaces along here. These parking spaces that are up in here, we are asking for a waiver from the regulations to not pave those areas because it's parked on a gravel surface right now that has been compacted for 17 years of storage of materials and use on there. Um, it's as hard as, as pavement. Um, they have a nice stone, pea stone surface that they have set up up in there. Actually looks pretty nice. It sits, sits behind um, a number of large trees that they have planted, evergreens that they've planted across the front. Uh, so it keeps it screened. With that there, versus the pavement, it has softens the appearance a little bit of that portion of the site. The biggest portion of seeing the site is comes off of, uh, I think it's called Bennett's Brook Lane on some maps, but this private drive that comes into the property. And in here, what we've done is we've added a little bit of a berm. It's a very small berm that's been added along here, but just enough of a berm so that all the runoff from Lennox all the runoff from this road, because this road is a gravel road, it gets back bladed and paved by Bright on a regular basis. And that runoff was coming right across, coming right down this drive, and coming in and exasperating the drainage problems on the site. So we put a little berm here. Now when it rains, the runoff from here stays within the right of way, has a chance to slow down its velocity, and it goes over land flow before it goes off into the woods and off into the wetlands. And everybody's been much more, much happier with that operation as it sits in there. Does that sound like something that that other property should be slowing that down and doing some treating it before it goes into the? I'm not going to address what somebody else may or may not do. What we tried to address was mm -hmm. trying to control runoff coming onto the site that wasn't approved. This runoff from the road. We found in an order of conditions from 2000, from 90, was it 2004? 2004, where they accepted that water coming in to the site and to deal with it. But to my knowledge, there's no easement on it. But it was addressed during that 2004. Should this be controlled? Probably yes. Should this be controlled? Probably yes. We're controlling it now with a berm here, 
keeping it from the bulk of it from coming onto the site. That's not where all the money when I came. Came from when you were questioning stones. That's that's a different kind of runoff, and I'm going to get to that part. That site runoff. Oh, I, came from here. I, I stood out here on many rainy days before and I was like, holy cow, look at this, it's just sheeting right across. Well, what the detention pond was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Well, what, what, what was happening before was the operation within the building is a wet saw operation. And it uses a lot of water and there's a lot of stone dust that gets mixed into that water. And that was going out through a pipe into the settling basin and then through these pipes into this basin. And it was going through in such a manner that it was exasperating the settling basins everywhere. It wasn't being cleaned as regularly as it should be. Um, it was just one problem after another. The cleaning process of the settling basins was to clean the area, to muck the areas out, set it up in this area here to dry, and then to haul it away. They weren't doing a very good job of that. It was getting set up in here to dry, and the pile was getting three to six feet high over a ver over this entire space, and then it was hauled away. So what's changed? We've added in three containment vessels out front here. We put in a closed loop system on the wet saw. So we haven't. They have. They put in a closed loop system on the wet saw. So instead of the water just being used and discharged with all the sediment. The water is used and discharged into these three <coughs> settling tanks and it rotates from one tank to the next as the process goes along. There's a, what is it called, a, a luminant? A luminant? Uh, I forget the name, I think it's a luminant is the brand name. It's a, a very, very fine filter that's used in the recircling system to take out a lot of the stone dust. And so it comes in through here, and as this water gets too cloudy, and too used up to be circulated through, too much sediment within it, too much TSS, they discontinue that one, they move to the next vessel. They add flocculant to this. Flocculant is something that we use uh, all the time on very tough uh, sites with fine soils for erosion control. You put it in, add these flocculant blocks into tracks, and, and then allow the, the water to run over the blocks and then over organics and what it does is it weights down and mixes in with the soil and it makes the soil adhere to the organics. Okay. Similar thing happens here, these flocculants are added in and it weights down the soil particles so the soil particles all settle to the bottom of the water. Is that the same um, chemical as uh, the conditioner you put on a baseball field? Don't know. Might be. Say Don't that again? Know. Bonding agent, isn't it? It's just essentially it's a bonding agent. If, if you want to give a baseball field a little flop and some water absorption, just mm -hmm. condition on the baseball field. I don't know. The, the flocculant is a bonding agent, as Peter said. It, it basically it's bonding the soil particles to one another and they settle to the bottom. Them so you can be what, what about right? all this dust that comes out from when you're splitting the rocks outside? All right. I think we're going to get to that. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm sorry. Well, that was where all the. Well, the dust issue is a big problem, I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to trying to get you through here. So we, we're taking these things now, and this is recycled by the saw, uh, by the, the saw water is recycled, and they move to the next one, that water is pumped off, and it's allowed to settle. That is then taken down, and they create what they call a volcano. So in the settling area here, they take the material that has been dried, mostly dried, but still has a good amount of moisture content to it, and they build a... Uh, a round circle out of it, and then they add the new material to the center of it. That material then is allowed to drain out, and it is actually filtering through and being absorbed into the ground, and then evaporation as well. And then that's put out to dry, and then that's stockpiled, and then that's hauled off on a weekly basis now. It's not allowed to build up to the feet and feet over the whole area that it used to be. On a weekly basis, it's that's hauled silica, off. That's silica, is it? Excuse me? That's silica. Cool. Yes, yeah, and, it, and it's going to, right now, predominantly it goes to Graniteville Materials in Westford, and the tune of about 10 grand a year, cost them to have it shipped off there and for them to buy it from them. Yes, to actually sell it to them rather than them taking it. So I'm sure they flip it around and make a product out of it as well. The saw, the dust thing that Mark's talking about, and the cutting in around the whole property. They have purchased a 
$30,000 sweeper, attached it to one of their equipments, and they sweep on it multiple times a day on a daily basis around the whole site. That swept up product is taken and that is stored up into uh, another container that is taken off of that powder is taken off also to granite fill. We have added silt sacks to the various catch basins throughout the property. Those are changed regularly as they clog up because they've got them right on the top and so as they become an issue they're, they're changed right out and they have a whole supply of those on site. The swale down through the bottom has been excavated out, re-stoned, re-lined, re stoned, and seeded, and there's grass grown in it. The sediment settling basin has now been dug out and maintained uh, so that they keep the sediment, uh, I think it's the closest they allowed to come is about eight inches to the bottom of the pipes, and that's worked out really well. And the basin at the end has worked out very well now because all this stuff is, is controlling. So we've taken out, before we were taking and putting all this sediment right into it, all the stone dust right into the process. We've taken it right out of the whole equation. That has jumped them in light years ahead of where they were before by itself. But they're splitting, you said they split in various areas across the field, right? No, the, the, the cutting right. operation all happens here. There are several areas in here where there is splitting that occurs, uh, where they have a, a splitter that just splits the um, material. It's all within these, these buildings across the edge, these uh, things. And they, each one of those has got uh, sound abatement material within them. Uh, within through that. What about so the one up on the right hand, the corner of the building where they're splitting most of the stones? The right the hand that's corner. Out in, uh, left hand this? Corner. No, other corner. This? Left hand corner, yep. Right here. Yeah, that's where all the stones are split. That's where that big. No, this is where the stones are split in here. Right up the side of the building, right up over there. Where, that's where all the stones are being split, where, the, where all the dust was coming through. This that's not there. happening anymore. It wasn't happening when I was there today. And uh, they have splitters happening in here. They have material gets brought in here, dumped, sorted, weighed, dumped, sorted, uh, and then goes through the various different sections. The, the maintenance on the site now, it used to be that this thing, this basin down here filled up on a regular basis, and I can't remember what it was when we were at CONCOM, I think we were at like uh, uh, several months now between the sediment filling up in here where before it was on a weekly basis. Are you through CONCOM? Are they satisfied? We are through CONCOM. What we did with Conservation Commission is, is that we had, first we had an enforcement, first back in 2009, we had the proposal for doing the work out back here. That was done. We got a certificate of compliance on that. And then there was uh, a spill because they did not have the circulation thing. And in the winter, this overtopped. And there was a lot of sediment in here uh, that went downstream. He had workers in there with buckets and hand tools and pulled all the sediment out of there to the satisfaction of the commission. And that w was lifted. The, a year ago, they had a, was it a year ago? They had an enforcement order. And that has been, that was on work for back here. And that's been lifted. We were filed a notice of intent before the Conservation Commission to try to address their issues and their concerns of up here. And the first thing that was done in conversation with uh, the operation at Stoneyard and ourselves was to take this flow out of this whole system because it was putting more sediment in than the drainage system could handle. The drainage system was designed to handle drainage and not designed to handle the stone dust product from the cutting process or all the dust that was getting there from the splitting process. What's your hours of operation? I have no idea. Do you have any idea what their hours of operation are? Their hours of operation are, have been within the guidelines. Uh, there has been no uh, complaint on it. I know that that was established before. I'll have to look that up I for you because I don't have that. I saw that someplace in our, ma in our paperwork. Well, there was a, there's always been there was a complaint back some time ago. Yeah. But that's been cleared. And okay. they've stopped and adjusted to that. They also had a time frame back some time ago where they were doing more cutting and operations in an outside or had the doors all open and they've addressed all that. That hasn't been an issue. There hasn't been a sound complaint or a noise complaint or a uh, traffic complaint or anything in quite some time. Um, I mean, 
Our biggest issue here again was was the noise, the dust, and, and the conservation commission with you overrunning the thing. So the you've addressed all of those things, correct? That is correct. And and everyone up to now is is, is giving you the the kiss on the cheek. It's okay, so far. Conservation so far, commission. just us. Yeah. 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 We're, we're, so we're we're back here because that was part of the process was to bring this back into here yeah. and to address these issues that we have with you here. Um, I so I, I have one more packet to hand out to you. I already said I heard enough. Well, there's one more issue because oh, one you. of the things. Oops, I grabbed the wrong packet. I wanted to. Uh, that was the. Uh, that was the. Uh, this was the. Uh, Listen to this thing. I just printed up your packet. Oh. <laughs> That's when you find out you're wrong. Oh, Peter, let's let's see what he has to say. That's all right. I'm well, I, Peter, one of the things is is that we had a comment from uh, Corey at Light and Water, and the question was, what do you have on site for um, hazardous materials? Yes. And we, su we supplied the information uh, to Morin and to Corey. Uh, they have a. You can see you've got it right on top there. They have a small quantities gener uh, waste oil generation uh, registration that they have set up. And then I gave a, a complete exhaustive list of the uh, uh, their MSDS sheets. And not all the sheets, but I gave the listing about every material. Then we were asked, okay, what is the... Um, what are the quantities of these materials? And the list is huge. And so many of them are just in minor household amounts, and the other ones of them are, show one more for you. other ones are for you in a larger quantity. Um, so basically what, what I've done here on this is to kind of break that down and to go through a few of the things. There are two oil tanks on the property, diesel fuel tanks. Um, one is inside in the office area in the mechanical closet right adjacent to the, uh, the inside furnace for the office space, 275 gallons. The other one is right inside this back overhead door that is encased in a concrete wall space. That takes care of both the furnace for the um, manufacturing portion, the big open area where the saw is, and it also is used to fuel the off-road equipment that's on site that uses the same fuel. Um, then in one of the storage trailers right out back here, they have um, the thing, the area set up for storing racks on the side. It's uh, one of the box trailer type things that you can't drive into. Um, I have pictures of the box <coughs> trailer on the second page, the racks that are in there, and samples of some of the stuff, everything from windshield wiper fluid to uh, fix a flat to um, uh, lubricant for the saw and uh, some uh, hydraulic fluid. The hydraulic fluid and all those things are up off the bottom, and there's pictures of that. In the maintenance building out here, the maintenance shed outside, they have a locked flammable case, which I also have a picture of, and then inside they have the, the things that are in use on a regular basis, whether it's WD-40, uh, a degreaser, what have you. The storage for it is here, the use of it's here, the ones in use are kept in the locked cabinet, and there's a picture of that open. They also have a trailer vessel out on the property that is for the waste oil, for the waste oil generation that they have. And I've shown the bottom of the two barrels sitting over the spill containment vessel. Um, so that you see that that's there. Each of these areas, both in the building and the storage sections, have spill kit all on, so on hand. There's spill kit material, the the quick dry and the absorbent blankets uh, shown in one of the pictures there. Mark addressed the question of the stone dust. They have pictures of the driveway and then a close up where you can see the actual grains of the, uh, of the pavement underneath it is swept on a regular basis multiple times a day. The swale down in the back has all been redone in grass and a picture of that. The settling basin that is in here, it's uh, mucked out on a regular basis. A very minimal swale that's at the top of the driveway, this little berm that we put in to keep this runoff going through. And it's upkept on a, on a daily basis. And then I finished off 
with the settling basin that's down in the back here. And as you can see, it's not getting the water flow that it used to have. This sucker used to be full to the top on a regular basis, and now it's down low on a regular basis. So, okay, so now I'll shut up. Do any of the board members have any questions on the presentation? Presentation. I have a quick question. <laughs> a quick one? A quick one. On, on your final drawing, 404, I'm showing an access off of the private drive into a storage area. And then there's a retention basin off of that. Is this area this right here? Okay. So this area over here. No. Back here, this, yeah, this yep. area. Are you still accessing that? Because you didn't talk about that in the long term, what you were. This is this is product storage back here now? Yeah. This is product storage back here. Uh, they do come out here, come down the road, and come in here. and, and So there's a written agreement with the owner of the private drive? Oh, yeah. They have, they have total agreement to use the drive. Okay. And this area is swept also on a regular basis? The, it, this is not a paved area. It's a gravel surface, but it is back bladed and, and kept clean. Bruce, when you were here before, uh, I don't know if it was you that we're here, but when the Stonyard was here at uh, last meeting. Um, In 2009? We, talk, we talked about, must, yeah, it was a while ago. We talked about uh, noise buffering between uh, the back of the yard and the, and the railroad, or the, you know, the, yeah. uh, pot, the, what do they call it, trailers next door. Yeah. Um, and at that time, they were, they were constructing uh, bins along that whole perimeter. Okay. Along this perimeter yeah, here. Yeah, describe what they've here. done there. Yeah, the, there is a series of, the, the, the bins are made of the waste block, you know, the big concrete blocks that are uh, poured up. They're probably 42 by 30 by 24 or something of that nature. And they have got a seam on them and they're stacked up. That makes the dif different bins through here. Starting from right here, basically just a little past the building, help keep the noise from the saw that's within the building down. They have this series of, there's called in here sound abatement barriers. There's one, two, three, four, five of these large, open, three-sided boxes. Four, one, two, three, four, five-sided boxes. <laughs> one side's missing. And each of them has got uh, sound abatement uh, foam material sprayed within them and maintained and within them, all those. How high? Eight, nine feet? Eight, eight, nine feet? Yeah. You get a permit for that? Because anything over four feet, you have to get a permit for. Uh, the, the, the structures on here are set? I'm having fun. Okay. Okay. They're We're, set. Okay. Now, you've answered my question. It seems like they've addressed the, the noise. Had no issue. complaints on noise. Heads. Uh, uh, last do we have any, any other questions? Just one thing. This, you were here because you were with conservation. Conservation had the issues. We didn't have the issues. That's correct. Okay. So. But, but uh, you should have, because were, somebody should have been back before you as this has progressed over were, the years. They were in violation. We, we came in 2009 when we did All right, so what's this. your question, Mark? They're still in violation of our site plan. They're way, How's that? There was supposed to be no work done the, behind the building. That was supposed to be left in its natural state. To, behind the building where, Mark? Right behind the building. There was never supposed to be anything stored back there. Any of that. I'm, I'm not bringing it up because I have an issue with it. I'm bringing it up because the only reason you're here is because of the runoff of conservation. The fact is, your operation out there was twice as big as it was 15 years ago. And Easily. And that's a good thing. Okay, you're trying to do the best you can to maintain what you have on there. There wasn't supposed to be anything in the back. Our only concern when we originally cited this was the neighbors in the trailer park. Right. If there's no complaints, and you're doing what you can to keep the dust down and the noise down because we used to get complaints on a regular basis because you were working till 10 or 12 o'clock at night with the doors open. I don't have a problem with rock all over the place and the fact that it's twice as big as long as you've satisfied everything with conservation. I'm okay with it, That's too. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think a lot of it has been changed with management. Thank you. We, can, oh. um, we, we have comments from the water department and the new information that you have now is the hazardous materials on site. Yeah. Um, do we know if the quantities so we know if you need the special permit for use in storage? We're, we say? definitely, from the material I've, I've submitted to you, there is over 25 gallons of several different items on site. So yes, we need a special permit for storage of 
um, several different materials. And that was those are the original those are oil, uh, oil, hydraulic oil, and uh, oil and hydraulic oil and right. waste oil. And I don't know if we can track the um, fuel storage on site or not. The fuel storage is is one of the heating oil tanks, so okay. it's all there. So what? You have several ways to approach it. Um, I would recommend that you we advertise the public hearing, adding those uses. Um, you can keep the public hearing yeah. open and just add those. And um, Corey can, will have a chance to review the list and the quantities and make any recommendations. That's great. The water department. I'd take that uh, as a recommendation. And when you, if uh, the board votes to continue this, then. Um, what I'd advise Bruce when you come back, make sure that there's containment around all of those yeah. areas. Yes. Uh, and that's part of it shown in the photos that I've given you. It's our little containment platform. So, there's a containment platform, platform underneath, underneath that. Tanks. The oil tank that yeah, is in feet. the manufacturing area is enclosed in concrete walls all the way around. Um, and I would and recommend that if, if Corey signs off on those, then he should be able to give you a recommendation great. on each of those. All right, and that's that's what we're looking for. Make yeah, a motion to continue this hearing until he can before us after Corey reviews. Uh, the next what meeting would be. Uh, the next meeting is um, September 24th. 24th, that's right. Does that give you time to? Yep. Okay. Okay. Does that gives us time to re advertise. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I right, second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The okay. ayes have it. We'll see you on the 24th. See you later. Never mind tonight, Bruce. <laughs> the, um, we have one, one uh, final item. 80 King Street, Rubber Flores, redevelopment. Um, Aaron, do you want to tell us what that's about? Or, or is it Cherry? Cherry Gould for, um, actually I represent the Webbers in this on 80 King Street, the sellers of property. Mr. Strathmeyer is upstairs presenting to the Zoning Board of Appeals and he asked if he had anything else to could pick up before this, but we didn't get anything else, so the Cricket Lane one didn't come in? Um, they came in earlier. Oh, it's Cricket Lane done? Yeah, we're all done. Well, uh, what do you got to talk to us about now? <laughs> it wasn't particularly well received. There was a lot of... There was mixed emotions. What are we here for now? Do you have a plan in front of you? No. Should I send that concept then? No, we just didn't bring all the materials with me. No, so it's just, I can either run upstairs and get it from them or I just... I make the motion to uh, adjourn. I can tell you very briefly. What's going on is that the Webbers would like to sell the house in approximately one acre to Mr. Strathmore, whose business is music, um, sales and service of musical instruments, lessons, and re retail sales. He's the old minor court, or the new minor court. He's the new owner of the minor court, which is in Littleton. And he wants to move the minor court there. He's upstairs with the zoning board where they are listening to or change extension or alteration of the pre-existing non-conforming. So what he'd like to do is do the house in approximately one acre, whatever he needs for parking um, and um, septic. So he's not adding another property to it? He's not adding another residence? He's I missing. love that idea. I no, think he's putting No, so then there would be four acres remaining, four plus acres remaining. Yeah. And the concept plan would show a small cul-de-sac road to serve three lots. It would be three additional lots mm -hmm. over here. Personally, I like the idea of making the four acres remaining another over 55 affordable, but um, I don't know if this board would entertain that because it's not five acres. Although it would be a full five acres if we did it we first. Certainly, I know I would entertain that. Yeah. I, I'd like that. I like that idea. Can we adjourn now? Yeah. Um, and actually what he was looking for was just for any input on the concept. He didn't have the um, plans in time to apply for you yeah. to you for a site plan and water resource district special permits. Is there anything in particular that you were concerned about with, with using that, continuing to use that site for retail? Could, uh, no problem. No, retail. not at all. No yeah. I think he's got one apartment upstairs. Yeah. The one other thing that might come up is that there. this is one of those water resource districts where nitrogen loading is limited on the septic system. And I already spoke to Jim Griffey, and Jim Griffey said he would grant, recommend the grant of a waiver as to size on this property because he felt that the retail 
use of it would be far less effluent going into groundwater yeah, yeah. than well, it would be residential. over 55, yeah. then the, uh, the yeah. number of, of residents would be lower also. So that's a good idea for them to push that to the end of the Well, I like the over 55 on this yeah. project because it's walked to the church. Yeah. It puts no more kids in the school system. Yeah, and you're closer to Christ, you know, they get up over 55. Yeah, yeah. Really? <laughs> better they, than being in Florida, you know, God's waiting on But they, can, um, would they consider perfect 55 and affordable? Well, three of them would be affordable. One out of three? That's three great. Over 55 would be good. Yeah, that's great. All right. Come make a motion. Uh, soon. Come back soon. Um, okay, let's go. I'll, okay. then, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Close. To close. Second. You Third. Can, you can. Yeah. All so in favor? Aye. Aye. Goodbye. See you on the 24th. Yeah, no, no, no. How many more units do we need?